Hi everyone, welcome to the Matrix Oracle. My name is Audrey. I am your host for this New Moon in Sagittarius reading according to your birth chart. Yes, on this channel, I'm trying to help you tap into understanding more of your own star placement. And that means understanding the cosmic dance where the planets are according to your birth chart. So what I will do first for this reading is a tutorial to show you how to enter on a website for astrology, your personal data, and look at the new moon in Sagittarius and where it's going to take place and affect you in your life according to the house system. So after the tutorial, we'll have a collective message and then those 12 houses messages. All right, let's do this. Easy. Uh, website Astro Dance here. So this is how it's spelled. And you would go here in the free horoscopes, horoscopes, drawing and data, extended chart selection. Once you're there, you will have your birth data. So imagine that's you. That's something that you can enter here or edit. Okay. And then the partner is the new moon in Sagittarius. To have the partnership, you need to go in the chart type. And you see, instead of natal chart wheel, you go into synastry chart. Once you have all this, you click on show the chart. Okay, so the person is going to be in blue and the new moon in red. Okay, let me I'll click off. So here you have the placement for the new moon. This is the person. And you see here, the new moon is easy because you have the sun and the moon on the same placement. And I, I would say that's a funny example. I just, you know, kind of took it by chance. But if I saw this, I would definitely say that this person is going to be strongly activated through this new moon just because there's a lot of that energy that is coming into their own chart, okay? Um, so the new moon is here in the seventh house. You see here eight, nine, but your message. Okay. So that new moon energy, even though it's a seventh house energy, this is going to be in the 10th. You see the numbers here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So you would be that person. You would look at especially message for the house number 10. Now, I, especially with Venus activation here, it just reminds me a little bit of the awakening of the goddess within a special promotion that I'm launching for this rest of the month of December. Um, and I want to look, okay, let's just play a little game here. We're going to look at where those placements are. So we're going to add here Lilith. We're going to add... Um, Cali, 4227, Medusa, 149, and Ishtar, 7088. All right, let's see. Okay, if that was someone here, I would feel that there's a strong activation uh, coming up. So this person is in blue, and you can see, oh wow, there's an activation of their Medusa with the current Saturn. Okay, Saturn is very much about action, reaction, and master teaching of impact. So this person, especially with this quincunx, some of you know that this is a very fast, strong energy that can feel a little bit like a slap punch, you know, an arrow shooting. So I would say this person here would definitely benefit from knowing this with Medusa. And also I'm seeing this line, maybe some Ishtar activation. There's some, and especially because Venus is being activated, Ishtar is the equivalent also of goddess Aphrodite. So, uh, you know, some connection to Venus. There's definitely here, I would say, for this person, if I were to look at their chart. There's also here Lilith with Pluto. But yeah, <laughs> this person would be, would be really activated. But this is how you would know. You look at the placement of the new moon and where it impacts your chart. Okay, so we know here this is a seventh house energy. Seventh house is all about relationship and 
um, how we overcome our ego personality between, you know, the lower self and higher self. So that's, that would be interesting for this person because it would help them with their career. Okay, so that's what we have for the tutorial. Now that you know, if you don't know as far as the new moon in Sagittarius, even though it's December 12th, for the exact time, okay, the exact time, I found this website that's great for you guys, timeanddate.com, okay? It's the moon phases calendar, and it usually picks up uh, where you're located, set up to your computer or your phone. So you would see here, the new moon, according to Pacific time in the United States, it's 3.32 p.m., okay? If you're living somewhere else, it will give you another time set to uh, your location. All right, that's what we have for the tutorial. Let's go for the collective message. So for the collective message, I have a, a lot of cards that wanted to come through for this reading. So what I decided to do is pick uh, some of the cards for each messages and then we're going to use tarot cards to uh, walk through whatever message wants to be announced okay so we have the courageous one here with the mars star now i'm not sure if you remember but when we looked at the new moon mars was very close to this new moon event okay so there's an energy here and what it says in this card first of all it speaks of courage the courageous one and on the other side, it speaks of outstanding stars. It speaks of braveness, being bold, being adventurous. Now, there could be also aggressivity, a competition, maybe a fighter, a warrior, but assertiveness as well. So it seems that there could be something from, you know, your past lives that can be re-sparked. Um, and that means in the both sides of the spectrum. The good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? <laughs> well, that makes three out but okay, you got the point. Let's read a little bit this one because I got, I got piqued in my interest. It says, a star, oh, so it's the star. If you have a star in your palm, okay? So if you find a star towards this palm, uh, towards the inner of your palm, it says, a star indicates that a specific planet is transmitting the essence of its qualities there. Wow. Okay, so you guys, that means uh, some of you, you might want to research because there's other, um, I, I can't remember all um, the planets for each fingers, but that could be something that you want to look at because you might have a star in one of your finger lines and it could be an activation from a specific planet. Wow. Thank you for choosing this deck. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, okay. Um, to be considered a true star, the configuration must be made up of at least five points. A star of eight points gives world-class capability. Stars can be constructed by a crisscrossing of a different line, but the most powerful are freestanding. If looked at a metaphysical way, a star is a confirmation of a skill developed in past life. Holy moly, I got chills. Okay, well, my, <laughs> my palm's itching. It's like warm on my left, especially. With some of you, maybe there's something here, okay? <laughs> I'm like, come and join me in this little esoteric trip here. Uh, <laughs> I did not expect this, but do you see that? This, this feels like there's some... There's some deep esoteric awakening, something that's like written in fate. It's like it's faded. There's something that you've rehearsed, a skill that wants to come back. Now, remember when I said the good, the bad, and ugly, that means that you probably practiced already and made the mistakes, and now it wants to be born again. Oof. Okay, all right. Let's birth the star. <laughs> this star is seen within the Mars power plant and usually close to the palm. Okay, so th this is for the specific star. It is not uncommon to find two or three small stars quite close together. The Mars star indicates a temperament that welcomes challenge, either mentally and physically. So here for this new moon, we're not surprised. New moon in Sagittarius, there's a lot of fire. 
Um, now, Sagittarius is an, an archetype that teaches us how to manifest, you know, how to really be the manifester and create more from the field versus observing the reality that already has manifested. Okay, so we have this message here. Wow, look at this, you guys, the Empress. It's definitely a birth. So some of you, okay, if you're going to give birth, this is definitely some uh, special baby here <laughs> because this energy around this time feels very, very uh, precious. But this is more to go back to this, um, you know, collective message. This is something that wants to be born. Uh, I'm not surprised now the goddess activation, you know, that I channeled as a promotion for this end of the month, like came through so strongly is that there's something that the universe doesn't want you to miss because it, it's it's yours already. Oof. <laughs> I'm like giving myself chills again and again. Okay. And we have nature. Sometimes all you need is to go outside, breathe the fresh air to remember who you are and where you want to be. Okay. This is something I need to explain to you guys. This is a little bit of esoteric knowledge. Okay. Thank you. Hi, guidance. Um, in the astrological wheel, okay, in your chart, there's something called the rising sign, okay, this is called, this is where you find something that shows A and C, okay, ascendant, this is where your soul is, you know, the sun lifts from the horizon, it just rises, okay, what's interesting is that when you work with the elements, and some of you may be familiar or not with working with archangels, archaeas, and the placement of the direction of the universe, okay, not going deep into this, but from what I know of practice daily, <laughs> uh, loving this, is that the rising sign being connected to um, the air element, this is your first breath. This is what gives you life. The air element in um, Chinese medicine, as far as meridians, it's connected to your lungs and your large intestine. So some of you, if you are, you know, pretty, you know, uh, good with your own guidance or whatever, maybe there's something through listening to my playlist called the 12 organs where I have all the 12 meridians, they're each connected to zodiac signs, but also lines of energy. But here, especially with something that is born out of something you already know, it really makes me like really tap into your rising sign. There's something that wants to rise. So you could go into that playlist and listen to the lungs or the large intestine. And what it does is that when you breathe, all this exercising, and I'm not talking about chest breathing, I'm talking about deep breathing with the lungs, you can exert out and expel out all that's toxic to you. And what it does, it also massages your all your insides and allows your large intestine to evacuate everything that is needed. Okay, so I feel there's maybe some breath work also, that would be highly beneficial. Some of you, you've been working sometimes with me through meditations and we do breath of fires, which sometimes I use in my uh, frequency healing music. You hear me going, and this is my belly going, okay? And that helps just like a fire, if you put more air, so it just consumes what is no longer needed, okay? So I love this energy. Let's see what else. Trust. Trust. I believe that whatever is happening to me right now is a part of a greater plan. So, especially, I would say here, okay, some of you with this Mars energy, it's been a little bit more like conflicts are coming up. Uh, this is also the month of December. It could be uh, putting a lot of emotional, mental stress Okay, uh, whether it is with relationships or it could be with finances. But remember when I did the tutorial, we saw that this new moon energy was very much about um, the seventh house. And it's going to influx in your, um, in your chart on a different house. Okay, so let's see a little bit more for the collective reading because we mentioned we would use some of 
the um, tarot cards. Now, I love that I was called to use the good tarot because I feel that this is almost like um, a signal for you. Uh -huh, and then there's a moon energy. A signal for you to see the good, to highlight the good. And remember, you guys, the new moon energy is a time where we're setting intention. So this cycle is 28 days until the next new moon. 28 days to set the intention to activate a past life skill, something that wants to be birthed. And that can be done through meditation, breath work, going into nature, and trusting your instinct into whatever is coming up to the surface to be dealt with and to um, support you. Now, let's see what we have as far as the tarot cards we have the four of air so this is about rest this is about you taking some time out and i feel this is like an invitation for the times where maybe you're struggling with this mars energy to make sure that you allow some restful time make sure that you know if you have plans for the holidays vacation just to be mindful of uh, mindful <laughs> yeah and i heard like this the folding I felt more like, you know, kind of a fold back. If there's conflict and people are trying to force you into engaging with those conflicts, fold back. Because I don't think it is uh, going to be like, oh, well, you know, you didn't make a point. There was no point to be made. Um, let me see here. I don't know why, but the bottom here with the shadows. Oh, yeah, the 10 of earth with the sun. So the 10 of earth is in reverse. Uh, there could be something as far as in, instability, insecurity in the home, in the finances. But I feel here with this energy, expect within the next 14 days when we reach the opposition of the new moon and the full moon. So that means, you know, the sun and the moon are together. The moon is going to be on the opposite and the sun is going to shine its light on the moon so you're going to have a lot of revelation there's some revelations that need to occur and it's saying your gift interestingly i put them under those uh, cards for activating this you need to get some rest for this gift to be born again and it's going to need more sun so if you can go into the sunlight as much as possible some of you might be winter some might be harder but try to at least do some breathing going outside fresh air nature okay because i feel that whatever you could think that was lacking okay it's almost as if you know what i got that's an interesting and it was eleven fifty-five when i looked at that portion um it's as if the universe is m that feeling of lack could be when you're almost like remembering, but you're not aware of it, that there's something greater for you that's coming. And that's that gift. So it's very, it's a very subtle type of communication with your higher self, because it's something you don't consciously remember fully, but it's there and it's like you're longing for it. So I would say as a remembrance for yourself for this 28 days phase, to set the intention that whenever you're feeling that lack, it's because there is a resource. There is a resource that's connected to your gift. There is something that wants to come through. So instead of going spiral in your crazy mind, okay? And I'm not saying your crazy mind, all crazy minds, okay? Because we've been programmed to fear the unknown, to fear the unseen, to fear change, and we're deprogramming this, okay? So don't beat yourself up with that. But be conscious of the unconscious trying to make you spiral one way and decide to go another, okay? And saying like, okay, when I'm feeling there might be lack is because a part of me knows that I have the skills to reverse this. Oof, I like it. All right, that's it for this new moon in Sagittarius energy. Let's go to the houses. So according to your birth chart, I will see you there. 
house number one. So what I did, I have all my little decks that are placed. When I was shuffling, I was setting the intention, put each house's on top. So I have all the cards. So we're going to pull them. Sorry, you can't see them, but they're there. Okay. <laughs> they're there. Um, and I'm going to pull each card. So here, very interesting, our life path with the code card. Look at this beauty. It's going to teach us a little bit about our fingertips. Mm. The universe. Ooh, house number one. <laughs> I'm not surprised, though. If you look at the collective message, this is big. This is the universe. This is the world. <laughs> Creation. Wow. And regenerate that came in the reversed. Whilst I dream, I clear my mind of all negativity and my spirit is refreshed. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, I guess <laughs> you saw my face in reaction for all of them. <laughs> all right, so what we have, these are the four different types of fingerprints. Let me see and hope that you guys can see. So we have responsibility, courage, I'm, I'm reading reverse, so I'm hoping this is right. Teacher, the health, the heart. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. Um, for you, it should be upright, you guys. Okay, so those are the type of lines. Now it's kind of uh, making me wonder. I don't know. I'm not sure. It feels like it's more like that but okay we'll see all right uh what it says palm tree structures human society according to four different paths of nature by following our life path we follow our true nature our talents and abilities will quickly come alive when we are aware of our life path the life path is your special challenge in this life something that you did not complete in your previous incarnation Life will be easier when you follow your life path. Okay, this is so interesting, you guys, because it really is, uh, you know, talking about this activation, deep activation. I'm not surprised. Also, let's look at the date, 12-12. You know, this is DNA activation. There's an activation within your cells that wants to be sparked, Okay. Um, so that's what we have. There's a, a, an energy of your life path that wants to come forward, um, that wants to be born. We have the universe here and we have creation. It says, remember your thoughts shape your future. Your words create today and your choices become your reality. Now, this is interesting. As I'm channeling this, I just released... Uh, a real to, to announce Neptune going direct until I think it's going back in retrograde, you know, back in 2024, I think t July 1st. Okay. But we are, you know, finally in that direct motion of, of the master teacher of our dreams and our reality, but it's really through the subconscious mind and that self mastery. So the moon is also, uh, you know, connected to the unknown and the subconscious. So there's definitely here something as far as you being able to harness the power of having control over your thoughts and your emotions. Now it says here, regenerate, um, that speaks when you dream, you clear your mind. I feel as some of you, it's really an invitation because it came reverse to make sure that in this period of time for those 28 days so you can activate deeper activation of your dna of those those deep you know cosmic activation that everyone is receiving but especially for you house number one um you need rest and you need to also know that your nervous system is just like an antenna and that means Sometimes it can be just overloaded and even fried. You know, I don't know if some of you have ever felt like electric or because there's just too much nervousness, but we're constantly receiving information. I'm not even talking about the machines, 
talking about ourselves, uh, being very connected to nature and our surrounding, and now having all those you know technologies around us that enhance even more and more that field full of more communication. Some of you, you know that I do frequency healing music, and this is something that um, I recommend in some of my playlists. You can find, I think in my aura, uh, auric health and wealth, you will find the aura cleansing and strengthening. It could be really good. Some of you, if you are members, I have created a power nap, a quick refresh for the nervous system, okay? So some of you, if you're interested, you can see in the description box below uh, how to join and support my music and my creations as far as binaural beats and all the sound engineering. So now let's look at the tarot cards, shall we? All right, oh, this is a big deck, whoa. Okay, well, this wanted to be shown, the magician in reverse, why? Why, Audrey, why? The, mes uh, the <laughs> messenger, I don't know why I was gonna say almost like Messiah, of Earth. Okay, all right, so I was gonna say Messiah, um, Messiah. Uh, this is the page, let me see my face. This is the page of pentacles, okay? This page in the regular tarot has this pentacle that wants to be offered, okay? There's an offering from the divine, but it is a little bit mystical, okay? So if you found this YouTube video, okay, and you found my channel, this is your time to <laughs> start sparking up your magic and shining through because this is something that's probably not going to make sense to your physical uh, I don't want to say physical sense because, you know, the shivers, the goosebumps and everything, those are senses, they're physical senses, but not senses to your logical, rational mind. But this is important for you, okay? And we're going to put it upright because we're going to state right now, house number one, that you are going to allow, remember, this is just underneath your life path, you're going to allow this energy to come through and you're going to allow the universe, the cosmos, to activate your magic. But it needs conscious awareness that this is happening. Oh yeah, baby. And then you have the sun. Okay, so house number one, really the card, the only cards that came reverse were the regeneration and the magic. And this is where I give you this whole little speech about your nervous system being like an antenna. And one also of the quickest way to cancel out noise, shower, the water just cancels the static and nature. The trees absorb a lot of the um, negative energy, grounding your feet in the earth if you can, according to the weather. A uh, great way to do that. And obviously sound. Okay, so some of you, I mentioned already some of those frequencies. That's what I have for you. House number one, if it supported you, please remember, you can like, subscribe. Uh, it's always supports um, the channel to grow, but also supports me to know that it resonates and you can share also in the comments what was your house um, and how it resonates. All right, I will see you soon. Namaste. House number two. So those are the cards that I already have piles and uh, shuffled for, and then we can use the tarot cards for deeper messages. We're going to review all of them. I left the ones that were reversed so we can shift this energy together we have here the individualist with the sun finger so this is something that i was wondering because i can't remember all the planets i think this is saturn but now i remember this is sun so this would be your sun energy and what it says here lower segment middle segment and upper segment now what does it say resources region Finger segments reveal our individual talents and abilities. Each finger is divided into three sections. One, two, three, okay? Uh, notice which segment is the longest. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> one segment will always be longer than the other two, even if one only slightly. Additionally, referring to all four resources regions cards... Okay, we have like all the all your fingers. Um, identify your longest segment of all 12. Oh, wow. This will specify your most powerful expertise. Oh my God, I'm loving those cards. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Um, so you would want to look at the longer part of your fingers. House number two, this is interesting. So let me read all of them. So if the lower is the longest of the three for your sun energy, the lower segment longer, competent in physical activities, concerned with appearance and has performance skills. Okay, great. Middle segment being longer, social magnetism, talent for presentation and arts, design, decoration, and fashion in a fashion sense. Okay. Um, upper segment longer has a critic's eye, expert at appraisal, and values individuality. Okay. All right. So here it says the individualist. So there's something about your uniqueness. Okay. <laughs> and when I said that, it was two, two, two. So that might be a, a number for you to remember house number two, that when you see through those 28 days of this new moon in Sagittarius, the 222 reminds you that you're being called to activate. There's something with your gift that is being activated. Ooh, I have like some activation here in my pinky, releasing energy. Okay, this is this is in Chinese medicine with the meridians. Okay, this would be water. Okay, and this is my feminine hand, the, fem the hand that receives. So I'm not surprised because this is coming reverse. The Ace of Sword and the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands in the regular tarot is, as you see here, she's trying to form this type of shield. There's, there's outside energies that are trying to influence you. And here with the Ace of Sword in reverse, I feel this is kind of... Um, you know, maybe some hurtful untruth, okay? And here, it feels like whatever, and it's in the receiving mode, whatever you may have received from the outside, and maybe that's something that's not even recent, that could be something you're still playing in your mind as far as things that were said and how it makes you feel, because those are swords and wands. So maybe things that were said and things that were done to you and how it makes you feel is keeping you from activating your gift and potential. Um, so that's a great guidance because it wants to be awakened. And especially here, you have the joy card. If you're feeling low in your joy, there's something that needs to be shifted in your relationship dynamic. Remember, if you watch the tutorial, we saw that the new moon in Sagittarius was in the seventh house. This is a house where there's a little bit of battles with ego, between ego personality and the higher self. And that means within yourself and within others. Okay, it says here, I follow my bliss and accept limitless joy. I feel as some of you, the acceptance, and it's interesting because now, oof, now this is my thumb that hurts. This is will, this is will. As if like there's a resistance to allow and to receive whatever it is that you have to transcend here, house number two, for this new moon that wants to be birthing in you something majestic. I really feel the word majestic. You need to release some of the things that you feel towards past action and past words that were said because it has affected your will. And your will, especially in the feminine, your will maybe to open yourself to receive and receive what? Your power. This is, this. I love the synchronicity because this month of December, there's a lot of activation and gifts that are sparked, but it's coming from the feminine. It's coming from this, you know, wild feminine that wants to break free. The dark feminine energy, and we're not talking evil dark, we're talking dark as like, you know, raw, unique, rebel, you know, that wants to be heard, that wants to be seen. It says in this card, call upon the elements, focus your intentions, and the greatest dragon is within you. So the dragon is, you know, the fire of the dragon eliminates all untruth, okay? Some of you, if you work with dragon energy, that's something that you can work with, is imagining calling in your dragon energy and, 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 putting all that, your fire 
onto those images and situations where you felt like disempowered. Oh, now I feel it in my toe, in my big toe. Oh my Lord. Okay, this is also a toe of power, but this time it went into my masculine, but it went into my foot. Oh my God, I'm feeling it all in my extremities and now into my um, my heart line. So some of you would have... Uh, oof. Okay, all right, so I'm getting... <laughs> I love being an empath. <laughs> I feel like I'm being pitched like in places to understand it. Thankfully, I know the codes. Um, okay, so what I receive right now is that with the toe, this, this kept you from taking action. It, it, it impacted your will. Impacted your will, but it also, it was hurtful to your heart with this energy here in the nail. Almost like a nail in the heart. That's interesting, okay? A nail in the heart. And then as a reaction, you know, it even confused your sense of give and take, okay? There's something here. Now, let's pull some tarot cards. But uh, thank you uh, <laughs> for this master teaching of mapping all those energies. When I do meditations, you guys, for myself, this is how it works as well. Uh, you know, I release energies and, and I can map out. And sometimes I have to interrupt my, you know, my meditation just to either take notes because I don't know if I remember. Otherwise, just look up what I'm feeling. Okay. And this is all part of the grand plan. I don't know why I said that, but I did. Okay. All right. It feels like this. Oh, yeah. Da -ding, da -ding, the call. This is also the judgment card. Oh, my. <laughs> my toe again. My toe and my left foot. And my right foot, sorry. My, my right foot on the nail. Okay. And it's almost like some of you, maybe you also the sense that because it's under the individualist. Maybe you've been scared to shine through with this this gift because um, of what people of what you carry that people did and said to you. It's 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 time to wipe this out. Okay, time to clear clear that slate. Now let's see. This one intrigues me first. Yeah, the Ace of Fire. Okay, the Ace of Fire in reverse. The Ace of Fire is the Ace of Wands. This is your Kundalini. This is your life force. This is your inspiration. This is what I just said. It's almost like the, the, whatever you were holding true that was said and done was, was trying to, you know, diminish your life, not even just shelter it. It was starting to, like, choke it. You know, just like a fire that gets put out. Nine of Air. This is about tension. This is the Knight of Swords. Now, what... Uh, nine of Swords, sorry, Knight. Um, when I said that, the Knight, there could be the Knight is first of all. It, there's a relationship to time with Knights energy in the tarot, so there could be something here that you've carried way too long over time. This resonates a lot also with this Neptune going direct, where it's saying like you have to pay attention whether you're still carrying in your biochemistry your past trauma. Because you could still be reacting to everything in your physical life in ways that is still like you're producing those same enzymes or hormones or whatever that you haven't processed because it was the past trauma and you haven't fully attended that event. So you're still producing through all of your biochemistry the same things that create and energetically vibrate to the same outcome. When I started studying this, I was just mind blown. Okay, I do a lot of like neurobiology or <laughs> I don't know even how to call this quantum. Uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> whatever that's called. But, you know, understanding how our brain and mind works, but especially with the relationship to the body. Definitely, if you're struggling, this is where I think house number one had that as well. The auric health and wealth, or even if you have deep trauma, the Empath Survival Kit. If you are not yet a YouTube member uh, for my music, and there's also the astrology if you want, but I do have like a inner child and I have um, inner wisdom activation. Also, the soul retrieval is accessible for everyone. 
I would say there's something here that needs to be retrieved for you to feel comfortable to stepping forward and um, moving on. I'm here moving on with your life with this. Okay, the four of fire. Okay, it came reverse, but it is. And I, I kind of flipped it in a way that I was not sure if it was reverse. So maybe not, maybe yes. So it's almost like it's in your hands. It's in your hands to activate your creative self. It's in your hands to realize that you have that potential and that whatever happened in the past was just for you to remember how strong of a being you are and finally answer the call because there is a new manifestation. It's interesting when I looked at the clock, it was 12, zero, zero. So 12, DNA activation, zero, zero, reset. You're resetting the clocks, okay? The clocks of time, new quantum timeline. Okay, that's what I have for you. House number two, thank you so very much. Please don't forget to like this video. If it supported you, it supports me in return. Um, and in the description, you have access to a lot of things that I offer um, and some of the cards that I'm using. All right, thank you so very much. Namaste. House number three. So those are cards that I picked from a pile and then we use the tarot deck to channel more energies for you. House number three. This is about communication with the higher self. The only card that came reverse is the let go. Okay, I feel that maybe some of you, if you have this new moon energy, the resistance and the call and the teaching through those 28 day cycle of that collective message that is about activating something great, a skill, a skill we've already rehearsed. It's about control and uh, surrendering to your universe. So we're going to say, and I'm not going to say, I was going to say pretend. Okay, so I feel like some of you, it's almost like you have to start rehearsing more of how it would be to trust, like almost like what type of person would you be like or imagine and fantasize or maybe you have people that you watch on social media or whatever like and you imagine their life they seem to be so in flow and like let yourself dream that and not compare yourself to that okay but more like let yourself receive what the people that you see are in flow with like the universe how they appear to you and take that for yourself because it's not a separation and it's interesting because look at this this is the feminine aspect here it speaks of union there's some type of union and, and a call for you not to separate for those 28 days because the universe wants to deliver something but you need to release your grip grip okay uh, it says i release the old and embrace the new i grow into my very best self and it's not too surprising with the seven of cups here. I feel there was a lot of past uh, timelines that you're cutting cords from. Okay. I don't know why, but I feel like, you know, like this is feeding this and this is feeding this and this cup is feeding this. It's almost like there was some type of creation that happened with different timelines that realized something that when you let go and you surrender, those timelines of great benefits and also union and abundance and prosperity that are channeling your gift and your best version of self, same flow, ripple, ripple, okay? That's what I feel is important for you to understand house number three. It's especially now I'm looking this line of energy, it's funny because we've been kind of covering a lot of the planets according to the palm. I love it how it's happened. You have the Mercury card here. And this is about your thoughts. And it's speaking of the coordinator. Now, what's interesting of coordinator, it's a coordination between oneself and the other. Let's see what it says. An engraved X. So if you have an X here, but if you don't, it's still, you know, it's still a, a message for you. Symbolizes the gift of productive interaction with a large, larger public arena. Characteristic include the ability to connect with people and to be seen as someone with whom people wish to reciprocate. 
I told you what you see in another is a part of you. Do not separate. You are meant to be inspired by others because sometimes they spark in you from whatever they're doing, but not specifically from what they're doing, but maybe it could be you, you are enjoying their craft or, you know, their crocheting or their, you know, pottery doing or whatever they're doing or even doing cars. It inspires you, but it might be because it's a skill you already have and maybe you're a beginner, but maybe just from what you remember this lifetime hint hint <laughs> okay um so it says here the mercury x so the that cross here is generally a respectable size and is usually found within the center of the mercury power plant so here the x denotes an exceptional ability to organize projects plan events and motivate people so there's something about your drive here and, and, and that wants to come forward. But it's, I feel that maybe some of you, you have to watch that overdriving force if it's too much mental, okay? It's almost like your mind can play against yourself. Just watch that communication. Maybe you're watching something, someone that is doing something, it sparks an interest, it sparks a desire, and it's a call for you to remember that skill, but you're starting to fall into the comparison, the competition, and then that creates a separation. But there's some different timeline that wants to come forward. There's just definitely something from the past that wants to be reactivated, especially with this new moon, if it falls in the third house. It says here as far as key ideas can delegate, mediate, and negotiate well. Good event planner and coordinator, public communication skills, and a true networker. So some of you, you may have, it feels like a water sign. It feels maybe like a Aquarius network, you know, um, even maybe fire with Leo, you know, it, it, or it could be just the Mercury signs, Gemini and Virgo. Again, it could be any sign, but it feels like communication. And again, we are in the third house energy. Not surprising. Oh, there it goes again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that happened for house number two. I have like this, this, this almost like pinch on my um, pinky here. So this is in Chinese medicine for the meridians. So we're not talking about the crosses and the planets in the hand. We're talking about the lines of energy. As I talk, I channel. So sometimes I feel things in my extremities or even in my body that pulses. And um, yeah, I had to learn a lot of the, the maps. And this is connecting you uh, to the water element. Now, as far as meridians, it could be... It could be the large intestine also, so that's more air. I don't know why I feel a little bit of a mix of both. So maybe there's something you're not digesting as far as an emotion. And this is where we're going to take the tarot cards, okay? There's a lot of interpretation with the hands. There's each organ that is connected to the feet and to the hands. Then there's, you know, uh, the mudra that have different uh, symbolism. Then we see the palm tree have different um interpretation wow we have a lot for you that wants to come forward house number three so let's indulge okay the nine of earth and the six of earth this is interesting because they come here almost like a yin yang okay i have a yin yang playlist so yin yang playlist i feel like some of you again that could be that your drive to navigate your life more with your mind and your skills that okay yeah i know how to do this and to go mentally about everything this is something you want to recalibrate use both yin and yang and there's both together and why i say that because you might have excessive yang and some of you may have low or overbearing over excessive yin you know when you're over yin you can fall into depression being stagnant uh any excess or lack, it doesn't feel good, okay? So that's that's something that we're seeing here to recalibrate uh, yin-yang in your um, your mediation. Because really here for you with this new moon energy, what we're seeing is in order to activate your gifts, which is the collective message, you want to rebalance, 
what's going on here as far as your mind, okay? Let's see for the feminine. Ooh, I like that. Chariot. Because here, it, I, I love this because it seems that when you're going to take the time to med meditate, you're going to be able to look at your ideas, you know, that your rational mind was giving you or things are how to do things. And you're going to be able to say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, you're going to be able to declutter a lot of that energy. Okay, so we have here the four of water and the two of fire. I love this because this is, there's some type of new vision that I feel from those cards. You know, here it's the four of water, but it's, it's supposed to be a card that, that they're showing that something is missing. And this is something that I shared with one of the house. I'm not sure, but I'm going to repeat it for you. House number three. Um, as far as when you look at something, did I say it to you? I can't even remember, but I will, re I will repeat myself because maybe it's something that you have to rehearse for yourself. When you look at things that spike maybe desire to the level of maybe envy or jealousy or whatever negative, realize that there's something there for you. Even in your negative feelings, there's a gift for you. And sometimes it's that, okay, this is not, I'm not envious of the person. I'm, I'm desiring that energy they are embodying, okay? And the energy that usually you witness is authenticity. And what is authenticity? Is really you doing what you love. And it's that emotion. It's your heart in motion. This is authenticity. This is when you do what feels an alignment with your whole being. This makes you feel authentic. And that's what people witness. Okay. And so there might be something like that. And it's saying to you, sort out with the plan. This is the two of wands making plans. Plan out. But plan out. Plan to, to rehearse some of the things that you want to manifest again and again. And when you see that there's shortcomings, do not shut yourself down because it feels negative or you shouldn't feel that way or you shouldn't say that. You have to see what it means beyond what it looks like. Okay? And that means take it to the next level. Oh, that means I like feeling this energy. And this maybe because that's why it disturbs me because I'm, I'm being called to embody this and I'm not there yet. So instead of making that timeline longer for yourself, especially here with time, that timeline longer for yourself and separate yourself, actually unify what others are showing you. Because remember that new moon is in the seventh house. So there is something about the mirror. A lot of the other people mirroring to you something that is meant for you and that exists already in you, especially for you. House number three, this is what I have for you. Thank you so very much. If it resonated, please give it a thumbs up. And if you need any support, you can look into the description box. I have some details for you, especially awakening the divine wild feminine. All right. Namaste. <laughs> House number four. So it feels very exciting for you because you are being initiated. This is the house of the spiritual home and also the home that you experience. But here we're channeling, embodying and receiving a gift, but also this higher version of the self. And here it says, I am open to new possibilities and I welcome new beginning. Now, the witch came through. So some of you, you may have some past ancestors with this type of energy, knowing this ancestry about knowing about esotericism, you know, Kabbalah or any type of ancient wisdom. And it wants, I, I'm seeing this pouring through, it wants to be channeled. So literally from the crown, uh, top to bottom, it just feels like an activation in, Maybe some of you, you're going to experience a Kundalini activation, but let's hold on to our horses because there was some little uh, blocks here. 
confidence came in the reverse in the feminine and love came upright. So what I feel here, this is your feminine receptive uh, hand. Um, you're meant to receive this when you are actually trusting yourself to receive and trusting yourself to maybe overcome some of the fears because with this type of energy if you have ancestries with the witch's wound uh you know being an alchemist and being any type of mystic uh energy from past lifetime it could be that you're resisting the next level of upgrades because of what you've experienced whether it's you personally in past lives or that you inherited through your DNA and your lineage. Okay, now in the mind here, it speaks of the strong willed, but it does speak of rigidity here, the rigid thumb. Now, it does have some good key ideas and support. It says resolute in ideas and views. So frugal with time, energy and money, strong-minded, maybe stubborn, self-reliant and persistent. So it feels like what I want to invite you to realize is that your persistence in life to maybe give your best and do your best. And I feel that if you feel that it hasn't led you, it has led you only this far, okay? This is your sign that there is something that you need to be more open and flexible about because this is when um, there's something greater that wants to come forward, okay? There's something here for you, house number four, that I feel with this new moon energy uh, in Sagittarius that just watch how much your strong will and your resistance and persistence, maybe you were in survival mode because of past trauma, childhood trauma, whatever, you know, feel, feel that blessing of having developed those skills, but not to the point that you close off yourself to something that is meant for you to receive by you. Okay. And it might feel like it's unknown. So this is where we're going to pull some of the cards. This is interesting because it was 333 on this section when I was saying this. So there's definitely some type of Christ consciousness activation. There is something with activating your vertebrae. So some of you, uh, you might be a YouTube member and you might have access to the 33 activation frequency. Uh, but otherwise, you can work with some of the other frequencies where I always tune into, um, especially I'm going to say for you, the wounded healer. In the Wounded Healer, I do activate the vertebrae according to some of the zodiac signs. So for this um, specific, it's I call it karmic astrology because it helps you rebalance the scales of justice as far as things that you experience. Go in your uh, chart and look at where you have your Chiron. So if you have your Chiron in Scorpio, you will have access to a frequency that balance both by tapping into Scorpio and Taurus because this is very common for us to learn and to grow over time as a soul, you know, as uh, a being, we, we experience both aspects of the spectrum and in those lifetimes and times of expanded and accelerated um, consciousness uh, expansion, we live lives that are very fast paced in those contrasts and that can be um, tiring, but this is where you're not meant to close off your energy to yourself because there's something greater. There's definitely, that energy feels really like intriguing, but I can understand how um, it can be a little bit scary when it's unknown. If you want actually, um, house number four, this is where I have that... Um, awakening the feminine the dark feminine or the wild feminine whatever label you want to give it but this 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 feminine energy that wants to free you from maybe some of you it is uh the witch's wound or it could be just any type of wound of being outcasted because that's kind of what it represents so we're going to flip this because we know you're going to have the confidence okay and this is something you're going to develop for this next 28 days, house number four. And this is going to help you because we have this 
the seven of fire and the six of water okay so it i feel that there's something from your past with that type of nostalgia energy this is the six of cups so it's something from childhood especially with this unicorn maybe there was a dream maybe i feel like some of you again it has to do with something you're very passionate about or dream something you want to achieve but it's something that uh you're going to only be able to achieve when you allow that gift to be activated. So some of you have to understand that your mind is not going to know until it allows itself to be more open to a different vibration. I want to share this with you. I uh, No, I haven't. But I had to quit coffee altogether. Um, now it's been what so many weeks, I can't remember, but it's been at least three weeks. I love my coffee. I'm from France. I, I, I drink coffee since I'm 14. Okay. Um, but what I was shown is that it was putting my brain waves in beta mode, which was really negative for me. Uh, and anyone I would say that is doing a lot of deep work with especially any type of trauma recovery, but also being able to access different type of ways to think and feel about certain events and why it's because that brainwave that usually coffee or anything caffeinated tea with caffeine uh does it puts a hyper focus like a, a you know hyper focus that's why we can be productive in the doing but it's a focus outward hmm that could be a problem because this is going to be a call within. I have like my eye. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, some of you, uh, that might be an invitation. So if you struggle, I, I, I use what you, what you want to do. And I did this for a couple of weeks before I was able to <laughs> take that like leap of faith. Um, I use some herbal coffee. I think it's called Ticino. T-E-E-C-I-N-O. Okay. Um, and it's an herbal coffee. And what you do, you mix both half and half. So you can start switching. And it has prebiotics. So it's really good for your stomach. It makes it more alkaline. And slowly, slowly, you can take away the caffeine. So you don't have those bad headaches and things like that. Um, but definitely for me, what I saw is that, uh, I think one time I had a fall because <laughs> I was like, oh, it's been, I channeled everything I needed and I took a very small coffee. I, I think it was a half and half with my formula and oh my God, something happened with family and trauma response happened. And I was like, my heart was, I could not handle it. And I could see that it was a higher lesson for me to really grasp. It's like, you cannot do what you're doing, which is this type of channeling work and also doing all my frequency and being like totally present and immersed. If I'm always on the hyper focus outward, I need to really be able to feel it inside so I can channel that gift that is mine. And that's something that I wanted to share with you because that's probably something you need to do. Okay. So <laughs> let's pull a little bit more cards and okay, that card just did not come with me. Oh yeah, the ace of water that came in reverse. Okay, so this gives birth to so much. It is a big pearl here, but I can tell you it's almost like in this big pearl, there's so much more. So I feel like okay, this is being blocked because you need you needed to hear this message. Okay, you needed to have this confidence. I really feel again this energy. There's something that you're telling yourself that maybe you're not capable of, but that hyper focus for others on others, uh, outside emotions outside of you, or that you kind of like put inside of you, um, definitely for you. I don't think I recommended any frequency, but I would say quantum fascia healing because it feels like there's like a whole action reaction program that could be keeping you from taking different type of decisions okay and and that's that's a playlist i have so i would say this for you that will open up a freaking treasure 
you know, that it has so much more in there, okay? Oh, yeah. So much more with the seven of water. It's almost like you have no freaking idea. Like, I, I can't, like, I can't even phantom here. This, like, I, I don't even, like, it's almost like showing me, like, like, Audrey, try to imagine, like, the most amazing stuff. And now take it, like, ten times above a notch. I'm like, I can't. Like, I'm, I don't think, like, it's almost like, I can't, like, I can't, I can't. Yeah, but that's for you. That's for you, house number four, okay? And that is something that's going to be activated through the month of December uh, for those 28 days, so it's going to be a little bit in January until the next new moon. So that's what I have for you. If it supported you, please give it a thumbs up. I'm excited for you. Uh, leave me a comment if that is you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so very much. Namaste. House number four. Okay. So there's a lot going on and there's some reversals and some uprights. So we're going to talk about first the theme, nurture. Okay. We have here this little card that is kind of a message from the higher self. This is your house of self-expression. This is a house of your inner child. This is the house of your pleasure. This is you enjoying life, okay, and enjoying this channeling of this new gift. So what we need to do, there's definitely some healing because here it's reversed. So let's read this. I open my arms and wrap around those that need nurturing, starting with myself, okay? Um, and I can tell you, this is all about yourself, okay, especially with that placement of the fifth house, it is still under the horizon in terms of astrology, that means that you're still working on your subconscious and things that make you feel or not supported, now this is connected to Leo energy, and I feel like you need to know in terms of meridians, this connects to the heart, so if I had to recommend a frequency, I would recommend uh, I'll tell you here, the yin frequency for the healing, because this is your feminine aspect, your heart, and here on your mind aspect, you have earth and water, two feminine energy. So I would say yin, frequency healing, okay? And here, I would definitely give myself some special TLC with some quantum fascia, okay? Uh, any type of action reaction from the past that needs to be destructured as i'm saying this i have so much energy that is outpouring from both of my feet and it's starting to do it from my hands so <laughs> i am not uh, sure if it's already me tapping into some of you doing this but going into that yin energy flow it says here bless all in need of healing hope and love spirit grant us strength and wisdom guide us to the path of wellness so we're going to put this upright because once we channel those energies and we talk about solutions and and how we can you know like the temperance okay like the temperance okay i know where i was going i could i was forgetting the heart okay all right, because the whole time I was like trying to remember, I knew there was something that I was missing to tell you and I had a solution, but there was something else. So I feel for you with this new moon in Sagittarius, remember the, the main topic is 28 days where we're going to activate something so deep, especially with this 12-12 activation, something so deep in our DNA it's almost like a part of you is like, you're going to get glimpse of inspiration here and there. And it's almost like, like, I feel as some of you, you're going to want to be very mindful because otherwise it's going to almost like flee away. This is like those moments of inspiration. So go and check out the heart because I felt that fifth um, house energy, Leo. This is connected to the heart. So heart, very, uh, you know, yin also. So there is definitely all yin. All yin, 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 yin. And it reminds me, if you need support, I do have a wild feminine energy activation. You can have the details uh, down below. Especially here, 
you have the queen of pentacles that she is she has all her stuff gathered and together she has the money the prosperity the status she is respected you know she is loved but here she's reversed and why is that and i feel i'm being called to look at the ram this is a ram and the ram now when i chant seed mantras ram okay this is about your solar plexus there's something about your own confidence towards yourself Especially with this energy that goes almost like through the horn of it and to the rabbit. Okay, so rabbit can be, it's about luck, but it also can be about fear. The horn, maybe there's something here that you experience in life that may make you feel that you were bad or something bad can happen or something bad happened. There's something here to heal in your negative, in your dark. And I feel in some of you, it's almost as if you, you have to realize that this is what, what you fear is really just like a child. There's just no light on what is there. So, of course, it can play with your mind, it can play with your senses, but when you put light on it, you're able to estimate much better what's going on, even if it is something negative. You're able to estimate, well, let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> or, you know, let me not think that way because it creates that vision, okay? Let me walk away let me remove myself from from feeling thinking or even being in the presence of people situation events that are channeling this and i feel that this is a call for you to learn more through this it's almost like your your gift is hidden to you and this month is an activation month for you because there's a lot of yin energy and yin is dark it's unknown. It's uncharted territory. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what's coming. Believe me, like the, it's almost like it's something, but it's something so great. You cannot even know it because it is about destructuring some of your fears. And I understand totally why it can be scary and why it triggers fear. It's because there hasn't been enough light on it. Now, how do you shine light on things? You need first to be the light. And what I mean by this, the only way that I know, you guys, this is why I create all my frequencies. This is through vibrational shift. You want Your aura is your field. You have a spark of God. You have a flame that's there. This gives you life. It's there. You have that light. Now, how you care for that light is a different story. We were not really told or, you know, shown, educated about this. So obviously a lot of us, okay. Um, and then sometimes, okay, whatever. It, it, it's human experience. Now, this is called your aura. You want to aura cleanse and aura strengthen. That's something I have in my playlist. So we have the yin, we have the heart, we have the aura cleansing and strengthening. This is much more go and follow your intuition in some of the frequencies I have to offer. Because it feels that it is stifled with not you having enough light, almost like a battery. So you have that flashlight, you're the flashlight, but you don't have enough juice to have enough light, light force, life force. So whatever seems scary just is actually dropping the veil of illusion of that fear and showing its true color, which is probably just something that is... A higher higher gift a higher knowledge about yourself about what you're capable of and how to change things around there's definitely with this new moon activation for you uh house number five some deep switch on as far as how you used to experience life that was more in a survival mode and switch it around to have water in the reversed there might have been some um you might have been in a past relationships that were narcissistic dynamics. 
maybe you just gave, 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 gave. Okay, so that would be something you want to watch for as far as that energy. Let's let's look at more details for you. House number five. Yeah, ten of fire in the ten of wands. You that's burden of the aura. That's that's something that this is reminding me of an exercise that I used to call the burning protocol. Okay, and this is about you taking a piece of paper and writing maybe there's a situation, there's there's a word, there's something, uh, maybe it's about a person, you know, and <laughs> burn them. And what I mean by burn them is that you have to write the name of the person or the relationship, and then you have to write all the words that are what you experience. So maybe you experience grief, maybe you experience betrayal, maybe you experience sadness, maybe you experience you know, cheating, maybe you experience, you know, dissociation, uh, violence, you know, very, very harsh things. And then when you put all those negative stuff, I challenge you, take a dictionary and, you know, you can do it on the phone. Oh, it's interesting. It's two, two, two. For me, this is, this is a symbol of quantum shift in terms of how you union or how you unify. This is, this is a shift. Okay. Um, I challenge you, once you have your list, usually people have like between 10 and 20 words, take your phone and go on a dictionary and look for synonyms. Look for synonyms of those negative words that you experience, feelings. And in those synonyms, find more. And sometimes you'll be crazy surprised how there are things that it made you feel that you didn't have the right word to put on it. And it just will just unlock a lot of that heaviness. Okay. So when you do that, you've then burned the paper, but then you don't stop there because then you want to write your own name. Okay. And not so much about the person, but you want to write how you want to feel now. Okay. So the person is really a mirror of you know, what you don't want to experience. Because usually what happens is when we experience something with a person and we don't really clear that feel, that aura, what happens is that we attract still other relationships through other people that are similar and sometimes add more to that baggage, okay? And you want to clear that space. And that means then, then you have to tap in the same principle in positive. You want to you know, experience love, you want to experience beauty, elegance, you want to experience, you know, comfort, security, uh, being held, kisses, even like silly little words, but whatever makes you feel good, okay? So we're changing this because we just did the work together, but that doesn't make you skip, you know, uh, if that's something that is harsh on you, then you really have to do this. Uh, as far as the page for the positive, I personally burn it also because once I feel all the emotion, I don't want to attach it to it. So I always burn everything because I believe that I'm being heard because I felt it so much. And then there's another release. It's almost like a release of blessings that I feel is uh, released to the world. Okay. Now, some of you, if you want to become members of the YouTube music level up, I do have a free and sovereign frequency as well as removing X's and X's with an H, uh, especially if you've had like difficult relationships. That's something that was created from Scorpio season. <laughs> that was pretty deep because you have a lot of shadow work here that's that's coming through. Six of Earth, that's, that's where we're getting. You're going to rebalance the scale. So for you, this new moon uh, in Sagittarius, if you have it in your fifth house, this is about rebalancing the scale so you can be more in your feminine, more in your receptivity, more into allowing, more into nurturing, really like getting everything that is meant for you instead of feeling like there's there's a part of you missing, okay? There's, there's just a completeness that's coming through for you, house number five. Thank you so very much. And don't forget to give me a bye bye. <laughs> Namaste. House number six. Right, so we start with letting go. It says, I am kind to myself and share my beauty with those around me. I let go of self-criticism. 
On the feminine aspect, we have the card of prosperity that is in reverse. It says here, focus on the positive and more good will come. Give thanks for blessings and they will multiply. Prosperity begins in the mind. We have the leader here with the Jupiter star. So an activation. So some of you, if you know a little bit of your chart, maybe there's a certain activation that you're experiencing with your Jupiter placement. So when you do the synastry, you saw it in the tutorial. If you haven't, you can look and um, check that in the timestamp and look at where your Jupiter corresponds with this new moon. You might have something that's going on. Okay, You might also have a goddess energy that is being activated. I know that personally, I was shocked. Well, not really at the same time. Uh, but my Cali, my natal Cali, is on my Jupiter. Okay? So that was like really interesting because understanding this, which is my spiritual, this is the master teacher of your spiritual abundance expansion, which ultimately leads to any type of expansion, materially, physically, whatever you want, you manifest and it ripples and it grows and grows and grows. Uh, it showed me how, especially with Cali, when you, for me, it was like, if I'm off my chart as far as, or my path or my oath to myself at a higher level, it will destroy because Cali is a destroyer. And she will make sure that the structure of whatever I had built <laughs> and thought with my little mind um, is not going to last. Okay, so that's, I find it's interesting because I have a good example for you to understand. Because some of you, maybe especially with this warrior of pentacles here. So this is the equivalent of the knight of pentacles, which is a slow moving knight. Okay. Uh, with the bison here energy, which is about abundance. So some of you, it feels like there could be a feeling of where's my abundance? Like where is uh, what I know I am meant to experience in this life? So we're going to pull some cards because it feels that it's, it, it's, it feels like it's hidden and, and deep. Okay, so you're getting an activation with this new moon energy house number six. Everyone is. So for you, how are we going to activate this so we can um, shift those reversals? And it's this is more of the feminine. So there might be some resistance of the mind. Remember, for me, I never understood. Like, why is it not wor working out? I don't understand. I thought I was on in alignment. But usually what happened is that when I started being too much in my mind about how things were supposed to be expressed or done, this is when I was like av avoiding feeling or listening fully to my what I thought were doubts, but they were actually nudges from my feminine and say, yes and no. It's almost like, yes, you're on the right track, but no, it's not exactly that. And there's a subtlety and here we have it under the deck. This is the, this is the chariot in reverse. It's almost like, yes, move forward, but not exactly like that, or don't move forward because we need to shift something, okay? So there's something here as far as shifting your mindset, okay? We got it. Shifting your mindset. Okay, thank you. All right. What do we need to change? Okay. Well, we, we were told here. <laughs> I'm not even here like, Audrey, did you listen? Um, the focus. The focus has to be more onto the, the blessings. Now, I do have and feel for you that you might benefit from my Wounded Healer playlist with Chiron. So you would look at, let me explain to you. You go into your chart. You can use the same website in the tutorial. And you look at your Chiron. Your Chiron looks like a little key. It's like a little uh, stick figure, okay? But it's reverse. I always feel like it's a stick person that's like... A, uh, upside down or a key that's just reversed. Um, and then you look at the zodiac sign. So if you have it in Aries, for example, you will have access on my YouTube playlist for the wounded healer Aries with Libra. Duality. We're helping you transcend the duality because yes, you've experienced stuff that were negatively inclined. We're not trying to deny that 
we experienced stuff that were negative and that it was hurtful or whatever it, it, it made us uh, feel. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And that, that means you have to transcend maybe some of the fears that it locked in your biochemistry and overcome some of those patterns. So this frequency is meant to help you with the recalibration because your chart has yeah, specific guidelines for you, okay? We have the Ace of Air, which is the Ace of Swords in reverse. And we're going to put it upright. Not yet, I'm hearing. Okay, all right, we'll listen. Because there's some truth that needs to come forward first. Okay, there's two cards. Okay, the Four of Earth, which is the Four of Pentacles. This is usually someone, uh, you know, sitting on their on their chest. Uh, there's something in, on your heart. There's something that you're not allowing yourself to feel. This is interesting. Ooh, temptation. The number 15 also in the zodiac is associated to the um, sign of Gemini in the degrees that speaks of purification and innocence. Okay, there might be, there might be something. Maybe some of you, you've tried to shortcut, maybe, and it, it's telling you, there's no shortcut to this process, not because you're not smart enough or you need to be more this or that, but because what the universe has put before you, in front of you as challenges and maybe temptations or trials and, and, and tests is actually meant to open up that gateway to your gift and it's in your heart okay let's get some more clarity here yeah some of you if you are deciding to join me in the youtube membership uh i do have an inner wisdom activation i feel for you yeah okay so this there's something about love loving yourself maybe you have you have a duality still about love maybe you're still holding on to um, negative terms and projection or focus on negative experience towards love, even towards self. You can have develop some, um, and I don't want to use the word self-hate, but this is something that can happen when we tell ourselves, oh, you're stupid, oh, you, sh you always do this, you know. You have to be mindful here because that develops, you know, if you start doing this, this, this on the long term, even though it's like, oh, well, I didn't mean it. Your body doesn't understand the times when you didn't mean it. Because especially if you're the one saying that to yourself, you made yourself feel the chemistry and produce all the stress response when you tell yourself certain things like that. And again, I've been there, done that, so I'm not judging. But I'm saying like, this is, this is what it feels like. It feels like almost like I'm feeling how you, you, you're not feeling how it makes you truly feel when you're doing this to yourself. And maybe as a result, you're hearing others do this and tell you those things, those exact same things, even worse. You know, that, that's what I feel. Okay, so messenger of water. This is the page of water. This, you see here, there's a communication. <clears throat> the seahorse really has the potential for so much abundance, so much abundance that can come through if there is kindness. And this is where I can feel finally you're going to be on the right path because there's going to be the seven of air, the seven of swords, all those lies, all those things that, you know, here we were reversed with the truth, the things that you were telling yourself. And yeah, it might have looked like it was true because you made a mistake or whatever, but it's not the ultimate truth. It's not the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is you're human and you're, you're learning and you're experiencing those things for a purpose. So here we have the eight of air that speaks of an illusion that we need to clear. The three of air that speaks of rejection. And here it is in the booklet, if I'm not mistaken, God's rejection is God's protection. There were some of the things that may have happened that were removed so you could be blessed. And this is something that the universe wants you to really harness. Um, the hangman here shows that there's some type of awakening that's coming. And I love that there is this full moon. So what you can expect receiving this message as, oh, wow, it was 10, 10. 
there's an end of a cycle for you. If you have this new moon, this new moon in Sagittarius in the sixth house, there were some blockages for you to receive this activation. And you're going to remove them and by the full moon, by the full moon, mark, mark my word, I can feel it for you. Um, 14 days. And I want to almost add like, you know, 21 days is to build a new habit. So it's almost like, can you focus on this message and really take to heart that you need to focus on the good, okay? And, and believe that the universe has something precious that is meant for you and that is locked in your heart and that when you are actually allowing all this process to work through you and letting go of the negativity, and you maintain this until the full moon and then even like beyond because 21 days build a habit. You're going to build a healthy habit. Did I mention the quantum fascia healing? If I did not, this is a playlist for removing some of the addictions, especially with the temptation card here. Okay, this is what I have for you. House number six. It was busy, but this is a house where... You know, the health is very much involved and service and it's almost like you're beginning to go towards, you know, the seventh house where you're experiencing yourself with others. So it's the last layer of the subconscious. So there's usually a lot of um, energy charged there because also the descendant line is where you interact one on one. So it seems here you're still carrying a lot of the one on one negative stuff. And we want to shift your focus and realize that all those relationships and things that happen, they were here to teach you self-mastery. So now you can reap the rewards and awaken those gifts, and especially one in particular. I'm not sure which one, but I'm looking forward for you to open those doors. And um, yeah, share in the comments. And if you, you know, have those results, come back and let me know. Um, that's all I have for you, house number six. Um, give it a thumbs up. It supports the channel, supports me to grow. Thank you so very much. And for additional help, description below. Namaste. House number seven. So let's look at this new moon in Sagittarius energy. You have as a theme here, the divine dream. I am divinely guided. My intuition shows me the way through my dreaming world. Now, this is interesting because it came reverse. So this is an invitation. Remember, as I'm channeling those energy messages, we're doing the work as far as when there's cards that are reversed, bringing the awareness on it. It's just a sign that there's a specific uh, pattern and tension that we need to bring. So some of you dream journal, pay attention to your dreams. There's a lot that it seems that is going to come through your subconscious mind. Now, this is interesting. If you have seventh house um, energy for this new moon in Sagittarius, this is actually happening in the seventh house itself. So seven, seven, I would say in terms of synchronicities, if you are remembering this, sevens are going to be for the next 28 days, a sign for you that you have to pay attention to your dreams and maybe what's going to happen is that things that are going to be happening in your reality when you'll see those synchronistic numbers they're going to be signs to reactivate maybe a memory from a past dream or just an alignment with whatever is that gift that needs to come through for you with this new moon activation there's a lot Remember, that is coming for everyone as far as this new moon energy, 12, 12, this is in the DNA. This is something that is fated for you. It cannot miss you. You cannot miss it. It can't escape. It can't be lost. It's always there because it's inside. But it needs to be, you know, if it's um, blurry with the sevens there's also you know divine wisdom and some of the cards with the seven can talk about different options you have to want and bring the intention of calling in this activation I think this is something you need to hear so now it's upright and now in your feminine space you have the sacred space that came reverse 
Take time for the dreamer. Wow. In you, find your power in stillness. In your sacred space is the peace you seek. What wants you is already there. Okay, so it came reverse because it's going to be an invitation to um, spend more time with your stillness. Here we have the three of cups. That is a celebration. That is a time for celebration. I feel that with the strawberries, that whatever you're planting intentionally, like maybe starting to journal, dream journal, starting to meditate more daily, start to be more mindful of your conscious mindset and, and things that even subconscious, you know, kind of relating each other, you're going to have something big that is starting to, um, you know, bloom more and more. But I feel this is more about the summer with the, ra uh, the strawberries here. This is something that is, you know, coming into full fruition this 2024, more in the summer times, okay? Um, well, if you're on the west, uh, eastern, um, as, as the north hemisphere, why am I eastern? <laughs> Whatever. Um, but I feel like for you, it's just, okay, June, July, you know, those months, um, this is something that you've been wanting. And it says here, the wealthy one with Saturn energy and the negotiator. So there's something as far as, you know, reaping, you know, especially with the summer, it might be for some of you more into the harvest season, but there's 2024 feels like there's a harvest and it's starting right now with this new moon and Sagittarius energy. It's sparking something as far as you being able to receive. So here that card, the negotiator, um, highlights this area of the palm that maybe you have an upraise part of the palm here that is predominant and what it says here as far as key ideas that you may be good in speaking and mediation skills that you understand human nature you're good at buying selling make, making deals pursuing and diplomatic so there's probably something here as far as charisma that is coming through as also dynamic in your relationships um i feel just looking at this hand and especially the star of Saturn here, um, almost some type of help that is going to come your way. Something that's going to be given to you. Let's see what the key ideas are here. Exceptional capability to create wealth. Skilled at acquiring resources. Business expertise. There's, there's something that um, you're good at that is going to unleash, okay? And something that maybe you haven't been able to spark just yet because of those factors. So now let's take the tarot cards. This is where we're helping with the transmutation, the alchemy, um, because here with the seventh house energy, it seems that you're, you're on the brinks of something great that is starting for you. When I said that, it was six exact on the time, six zero zero. Six is a number of creation. It's a number of choice. It's a number of free will. It's a number for intention. And zero zero is a reset number. So there's something here as far as you starting a cycle. And that started for this next 28 days, okay, for this moon cycle that is going to spark some great intention, but this message needed to come through, okay? Um, with the queen of water, you see how she receives all that she needs? Is through stillness, is through meditation. So some of you, if you're struggling with, you know, maybe a business idea, maybe a career, maybe your wealth, your abundance, this feels like something is major for you as far as the house seven, as far as receiving abundance and establishing a career. Um, I would say that this is all feminine energy that wants to come forward. All feminine energy. Okay, the two of water comes in reverse. You might have some separation, especially because it's here in between. You separate or compartmentalize. I'm sorry if I don't say this right. This is not my first language. 
compartmentalize, yes, uh, you know, uh, put it in boxes, what your mind says to you, and maybe sometimes you have nudges from your heart or your subconscious trying to come forward and come through, and you're ignoring it, or you're bypassing it, or you're just putting it aside for later, I feel this is an invitation to dive deeper in it, okay? I would suggest for you the yin frequency healing. There might be a, a need to recalibrate this. And even for the yang, you might be over-yang, over-rational, over-mind-oriented. Uh, and I wouldn't blame you because it seems that you have a lot from your intelligence, from this uh, ability to connect with others, that is a gift, that is part of your gift, that is part of your skill, that is part of this activation that we're seeing for this new moon. So I don't blame you for that, or you shouldn't blame yourself for that, that you have this very sharp mind, but there's something that you need to practice, and it, it feels like a balance, a back and forth between the two. I, almost like a relationship. So this is where maybe some of you, you are in a relationship and the skills that you have to practice in that relationship is part of your activation. Okay, let's see. Ooh, two cards. So we have the seven of fire. So seven of wands. This card in this deck speaks about uniqueness. You, I told you that. How seven? I told you so. <laughs> I feel that some of you, it's something that maybe some of you, you receive guidance from others. Remember, seventh house energy is also a house that put people in relationship together. So there's a lot of mirror effect. People might be hinting you things that you're ignoring to hear. And that is coming through your feminine intuition, but you're not listening or you're ignoring, putting aside. So it comes back at you through another person. Um... It's time to end a certain cycle of how this process goes, okay? It's almost like if you're getting very reactive when others are telling you how to do things, what to do, it's normal because you have a lot of inner knowing, but it's as if the universe is going through other people to create that that contrast so it's almost like you don't have to tell me i know i know and yet why aren't you taking all the actions so we're going to say you're going to take the actions you're going to stop the cycle of you know um having others um, be an intervention for your sacred feminine so what can we tell you house number seven for more of that guidance <laughs> towards your higher self and especially your feminine. This card fell block. It's, it's the resistance that I felt. And I was like, why aren't you coming forward? Why aren't you coming forward? Eight of air. It feels like there's a confusion. Now, it's the air. This is a, a yang energy. So it feels like, again, it feels like your mind is clouding you it's like there's a lot of sharpness in terms of your abilities or things that you're good at um but there's in order to tap into the feminine that sharpness needs to be relaxed you need to relax the mind in order to tap to that frequency okay so some of you this is something that i suggested to one of the other houses i can't remember i think maybe house number three uh, but don't quote me on that because there was a lot of messages. Um, but about co coffee and caffeine, putting your brain waves into beta, which is a frequency that gets you very productive, which we see here. But the problem with this is that it shifts your focus on the outward. And then this effect lasts at least four hours. Okay. And even if you took a little dose, it shifts your frequency. So some of you, and, you know, I, I wonder how I, you know, manage <laughs> so many years on caffeine because I'm like, oh my God, for someone that was so sensitive, this really made everything hyper outside of myself when um, I'm more of an introvert nature uh, overall. So that, that was good probably for me because I was a little too introverted. 
and I was able to manage to rebalance that. But some of you, I feel this is something you needed to hear because your confusion is not what you're used to. It's, it's almost like you can't see it because your rational mind cannot access. It cannot read through this. Okay, this is almost like you're going to have to intuitively tap into that fog. Okay, so let's get a little bit more clarity, shall we? Okay, this is interesting. The three of air, the three of swords. This is God's rejection, is God's protection. Whatever doesn't come into fruition or doesn't last or that you try and that doesn't work out, realize that this is because something greater is coming forward. And you have to be at peace with letting that go because there's something greater. Let's, let's see a little bit more about that something greater. Hanged men. It's, 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 it's about you pausing. So some of you might have been that you had a spiritual awakening because that, you know, usually that hanged man has a halo. You had to go through a spiritual awakening. Maybe you were trying to force your way through a lot of the rational mind, uh, the, the sharpness of your mind, and it, it, you were totally ignoring your feminine aspect. Now we have here the four of pentacles or the four of earth in reverse. There's something in your heart. And I wonder if some of you, you're just not quite aware of your dream. You haven't been able to really tap into it. Okay, so let's see if we can get more guidance. It, it feels like there's a lot of steps for you that needs to come forward. And I would say uh, first is to be more comfortable with dream journaling so starting more communication with your subconscious starting to really commend yourself to start writing because i feel like some of you it's almost like write about what about my feelings okay or about my dream i don't remember my dream i said that a couple of times um even to many clients it's like i dream journal for wasn't that 10 years 10 years and at the time, I don't know why I was doing it. It was something that I just felt compelled to do. And I had tons of journals, but really they were about dream journal because I had very vivid dreams that I could remember. Um, but the more I did this, even if I didn't remember, just the fact that I would write the date and say, last night, I know I dreamed, but I can't remember what. It started a chain of communication and you want to do this as you rise. So you can make, not your cup of coffee, something decaf because you want to stay on hyper focus while you do that. You don't want to put yourself in better brainwave because you already lost that gateway of communication. And then it, there's a flow that comes through. Okay. You need to connect to the flow. I think this is, and the flow is the feminine. Yeah, and some truths are going to come forward. But I, I picked that reverse, and I feel it's almost like you're going to realize more of some of the things that don't align with you more and more to make space with what does. Okay, it's almost like first going by elimination with I don't want that, I don't want that, I know I don't like that, I know I don't like that. And the more you say no, to certain things or things that, you know, well, this didn't work out, so mustn't really be in alignment. The more you, it feels like there's a review, okay? You need to review a little bit your path and be able to go through elimination. Well, when I did this job, or when I lived this, in this place, or when I was in that relationship, this, this, I liked, I didn't like, just knowing your likes more and more. There's definitely for you with this new moon in Sagittarius, house seven, some discovery of more of your authentic self and authentic path. And even some of you, your dream, because that might be something that was confused uh, for a while in your life. So that's what I have for you. I trust this supports you for this 28 day cycle. If you need personal assistance, especially there is an awakening the wild feminine energy activation until the end of this month promotion. You can check it out in the description box. 
that is very much in alignment with that. <laughs> Thank you again. I will see you next cycle. House number eight. So I'm excited for this energy. This is the house of shadows. This is where we're doing all this activation work about our light so we can become the flashlight in the dark of the unknown so we can lit up our own path. And I love this. So I don't know if you have any uh, Sagittarius or Scorpio energy that vibrates to it. It could be um, because of this alignment between the new moon, but also the eighth house Scorpio energy, but it doesn't have to be. But there's some messages that are coming for you for this activation, for whatever is being activated at, in terms of skill. Remember, this is an activation at your core for this new moon in Sagittarius. I'm loving this energy. It says here, I am receiving powerful messages from my guides right now. I trust my feelings. Very much some clarity. This is the pile for the heart, the sacred feminine clarity that's coming through when you listen to your emotions. It says here, banish the fog of illusion. Open your eyes to the truth. Remember the perfection of who you are. That is very interesting because I just come from house seven. And house seven had a lot of fog energy. So everything that I'm channeling here for house number eight and you're feeling like, oh, that's very cool. But it's like you're not seeing it manifested just yet or through the cycle. You want to review the house before. Because the house before, remember, we're using a tool of ascension. The zodiac is a tool for enlightenment, for you to reach enlightenment. And this is why it repeats again and again, because this is a multi-leveled... <laughs> game we're playing um but that's one trick that i want to give you like when especially me doing this type of channeling you have an activation in a certain degree of the wheel okay location and it activates a bunch of planets if you struggle you can go back and if you struggle with the one level before you go back just like mario <laughs> i'm a nintendo girl back in the days when it came out okay um if you're my type of, you know, um, year, 1978, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Um, so there is, this is something I wanted to mention because I found it very interesting that I came from an energy and a house that was very foggy and there was a lot of, you know, recommendations in terms of what you could do to help that fog. So if you feel any kind of unclarity, through this phase or when you're listening to this because i'm going to release it a little bit ahead of time you want to look at those messages but know that clarity is coming know that messages are coming through the feminine okay so in terms of the masculine we have a very powerful um card here with the sun star okay and it says the famous one the key ideas here are recognized and popular, distinguished, adored and applauded, and a star. Okay, so there's something here as far as you, you're going to be activated so strongly that it's almost like you're not going to be able to miss out on whatever it is that you need to uh, accomplish. But again, this is collective energy that I'm reading for, not for a person, uh, most people, but there's going to be a lot of people watching this. So what I'm seeing is that the way to nurture this energy so you can remember fame is, which is interesting because um, fame is part of the zodiac and it's some degrees in the cancer uh, archetype, which is the archetype of the healer of the heart. Um, and it is obviously in opposition with Capricorn, okay? Those degrees that speaks of fame are in direct opposition with Capricorn that speaks of degrees of mental focus. So I thought it was very interesting because it means that your and when I, I tapped into what is fame, it's more of a recognition of your peers, a recognition of your friends and, and people that you, you know, um, vibrate 
uh, to and that resonate back to you. So it was kind of like tapping into the law of resonance and vibration. And it came from on the polar opposite with a lot of self mastery from the mind to focus on the things that you really want. Okay, so positive focus. And why I'm saying this, because those are the cards in the middle that maintain that frequency. The Nine of Cups, which is about emotional fulfillment. And we have here the Six of Pentacles, which is a good give and take, you know, relationship dynamic uh, amount flow. Okay, so that means there is something here that is being activated for you, house uh, number eight, in terms of... Maybe you overcoming a lot of your shadows, doing some of shadow work, light work, and there is now a lot of messages that are in alignment also to maybe guide you further in self-mastering those levels, okay? Let's get some tarot cards as far as, whoo, okay, <laughs> all right, um, that energy straight here. Okay, this is interesting, five of water reverse with the temptation. So five of cups, you know, there's this kind of desolation, uh, this kind of like uh, energy of uh, like uh, crying over spilled milk um, and with temptation. It's like you're being warned, almost like a caution, not to let yourself fall victim to um, wallow on things that you already overcome, you know, or things that could be better but it's not that bad there could be some old habit of mechanism um that vibrate to past trauma or past negative conditionings you had to overcome for this one i would definitely suggest the quantum fascia healing playlist especially with the temptation there is a removing addiction and it doesn't have to be substance addiction i used to be addicted to worrying Okay, and it's very common when you have a very rocky childhood and move a lot or whatever, a lot of events going on, um, that you would have a type of, you know, response. And I, I remember when I created this, I'm like, why am I creating this? I have no problem with substances. Actually, they scared me. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, just the addiction scared me in terms of, of a, a chain, another chain um, because of my own personal trauma and, and what I witnessed. But then I was, you know, humbled and said, so like, well, you do have an addiction. Look at you. <laughs> Looking at this, it's like, ooh. Um, there was a worry. Why am I thinking of this? Or why am I... What is the addiction? It's like, yeah, you got to watch out how you were conditioned because of your environment, some of your society, your religion, whatever, and be truthful and honest about yourself and, and, and be okay with having those weak points or, you know, shortcomings and do something about this. So this is why I do my frequency music. I, you know, I feel it to heal it and then I make sound. Okay. Uh, so that could be something for your house number eight that could be purposeful to maintain that frequency, to be very self-aware of, um, you know, anytime you feel like, oh, I'm going back, or this is a setback, or step back, don't do that, because you're never at that same level, you can never be at that same level, even if, like, you imagine you're, like, build this fortune, and then you lo lose it all, when you're losing it all, whether it's not the amount of money or uh, possessions that make you on a scale, it's more of the experience because remember, you're here to learn. Now, the only way to stay higher also in that scale is not only getting to um, access the wisdom of the experience, but to maintain the frequency of love, especially towards yourself, so you can overcome whatever it is meant to teach you. Wow, I feel like I'm like going super deep for you. <laughs> I'm like saying things that, you know, it's like almost like, wow, Audrey. Like, where is this coming from? Okay, so we have the page of air. There's a liberation. There's something through this month that um, that is going to feel like such a liberation and probably creating that, like, that fame energy. So probably you're going to have some type of hit factor for the next 28 days coming in fruition or whatever 
you're channeling, activating out um, as far as this DNA activation with the new moon in Sagittarius is something, an idea that is supposed or meant to be known by many others. So it could be something that is going to be great for many people to have access to. And here we have the seven of pentacles that came reverse. So this is a warning as far as also your patience. Make sure that you are patient with the process. This is where I told you like, it's okay. We all have shortcomings. What's important is knowing them. And I would say like, for example, if you lose your temper or if you fall out of alignment, it's more about how fast can you pick yourself back up. It's not about not falling. We fall, we trip. This is part of the journey. Uh, you know, you, you watch babies learning how to walk and toddlers, they trip. They fall. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's more about, and usually it's more about other people's reaction, but you know, it's like babies are not really reacting except if it really hurts, but, um, watch your own reaction because it kind of ripples out. So just like the parents would, <gasps> and then it's like, if you feel like, Oh my God, I did this. And then you're going to have an effect where other people are going to vibrate to this and probably going to point back out, back out to you this type of energy. So just be kind. It was 1111 on your portion here, message um, house number eight. So that's what I have for you. I trust this is supporting you in great ways. This is an amazing 28-day um, cycle for you. If you need personal guidance, I have some offers and description here in the video box. Thank you so very much. And please don't forget to like. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. House number nine. So we're starting with really good energies here with the growth card. There's this activation that is meant for you to receive more abundance, just like a seed. It's like a blooming. It's like an expansion that is promised. Now, house number nine is Sagittarius energy. So that's like double Sag, double activation. So some of you, you might not realize it, but it's like you're getting a double dose of this good stuff. Um, it was 33 seconds here. So this is almost like this was meant for you to receive exactly now, exactly at this point in your life. This was all divinely orchestrated, planned. So whatever it is, this is really good. Now, it says, I challenge myself to step outside of my comfort zone as I travel on to the road to growth and illumination. Okay, I told you, double zap. <laughs> double growth, double, double, um, and no double trouble, okay? Because that's part of the only card that came reverse for you, house number nine, okay? The only card that comes reverse is the five of swords, which is the mental chatter that can go against yourself, okay? That's very interesting because... The way this is placed here, we have the four of pentacles that is, you know, about, you know, usually it's someone that's sitting on a chest with coins, okay, and they're not able to open up. With this card here and the specific deck, there is an opening. It feels very Lakshmi, very abundant, but this is part of the mind side, okay, two cards wanted to come. And here, this is the feminine. The feminine here speaks of the quest. Now, it's almost as if you really have to learn how to develop a growth mindset, especially with this Mercury star that speaks of the brainstormer, the brain, okay? And it's, it's almost as if the universe wants to teach you how to develop a powerful abundance mindset, success mindset because there's already some type of level of you know with this energy that I'm feeling of of self mastery to open up to your heart okay it's as if the ones that have this energy especially with the new moon there's a lot of activation so it's going to trigger um a lot of revelation uh, about yourself, but in the greatest ways. But at the same time, it's going to be able to show you the duality, the other side of the coin, okay? Um, this is interesting because I have a map here of San Francisco in front of my eyes. And while I was channeling all this, 
um, my, my eyesight just went on the word Twin Peaks and Diamond Heights. Okay, so there's something as far as the twin energy, which is duality, which is also could be Gemini. Some of you, you could have Gemini in your chart, uh, some Gemini placement, rising, whatever. And the diamond is multifaceted. So it's a kind of like trying to show you maybe if I start thinking this way, this could create this outcome in good or bad. Okay, it's just like it's kind of like you're house number nine, you're spiritually initiated to the power of your mind and that self-mastery. Now, on this card here, it says, be bold and mighty forces will aid you. Take action. Good luck favors the brave. So a lot of other houses, they were, you know, asking more of introspection, journaling and certain practices. Here at that level of the wheel of enlightenment here, uh, with this new moon energy, if you have it in the ninth house, it feels like you're more encouraged to take action, but from a place of whatever you've already worked on, that you've channeled, you know, parts of your dreams, your aspirations, things that are already very present in your mind, okay, and ideas that are there, but it's as if, if you're not feeling the momentum to move forward, this is something that I shared with house number eight, because a lot of those houses, especially I would say from three to six, um, they could have been like a lot of like fog or unclarity, you know, things that we had to do to find clarity. If you're not in alignment yet with this energy okay i don't feel so but it could be you know we're falling out of alignment you can do something that is easy for you to dial back in the wheel so if you have this in house number nine and you're struggling with it go into a house number eight and if the message from house number eight you're still not seeing it fully you go to house seven and so on and so forth because ultimately the energy of uh, uh, any event or any transit of planet starts with, again, number one all the way through 12, um, because this is meant to um, enlighten us about a certain topic, okay? So here, let's pull some cards, okay? Because I feel that I already shared with you everything that I could from those little cards, those two flyers here. Flyers. Maybe some, some of you, this, it, it, it's public. There's something about publicity, advertisement, public, marketing. This is something, or you're going to be hot <laughs> in terms of, you know, um, uh, your ideas or whatever you're brainstorming about. And it feels like it's, it's, it could be accessible or valuable to the public. Okay, we have here the eight... A fire, which is interesting because it speaks of going into the unknown here in this um, in this deck. Okay, this is you know a card that speaks also of communication, but in this good tarot, this is about uncharted territory. Do you see here that there's some duality? I want to put this here. This came reverse. Okay, now the tower comes also, and it comes also reverse. So let's let's get some clarity. As far as, we're going to keep them reversed because we want to know how to transmute this. What I feel right away, though, is that this Five of Swords, remember, it's almost like it's calling you not to go back into the old ways that you already worked out of. And I feel as some of you with the Tower and the Four of Pentacles, you can may, maybe have some type of breakthrough. It's And I'm, I'm hearing the Rumi um, quote or proverb or, uh, that speaks of the, you know, the, oh, is it like a, something about like where the light enters is through that crack. You know, I'm sorry, I, my, my mind can't remember, but I can remember the image. It's almost what breaks you makes you. OK, because it's almost like this this little crack in your heart was meant for you to allow the light of truth, the, the, the truth of yourself, the truth of what you needed, the truth of what was meant for you to achieve. 
It's almost like the things that broke you, the things that were really hurtful. And it's saying, don't go back into rehearsing those patterns and those thoughts, maybe those conflict in your mind, but allow yourself to see how it was meant to be for you to channel something greater. This is where I really feel, again, that little say that I like to share with you guys. Um, I actually had made a reel about this like months ago. And it's turning scars into stars. This is, this is the ultimate gold. This is the ultimate illumination. This is the ultimate transcendence, okay? So let's get some more energy but right there i can tell you baby <laughs> we can turn this around oh wow i liked when i said that you can turn anything around this is something if you have doubts about your finances your career whether it's going to work out or not you know don't doubt yourself and it's funny you guys because um i just heard my 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 teeth just earlier just brushing and um, I just happened to, <laughs> while I was talking, just touch my lip. And I almost like <laughs> put my finger like straight in my mouth. And it was showing me like, watch your words. Watch your words. And especially if they're spoken. If you catch them in your mind, this is first step. Um, you know, say just scratch, delete, erase. Scratch, delete, erase. I don't know why I said those three words, but that's what came. Scratch, delete, erase. Okay, find a way for yourself to kind of scratch, delete, erase whatever negative thought or feel or whatever came through so you can give yourself a blank slate. Okay, that, that's a clean blank slate. Okay, it feels like there's some type of um, almost like tapping, you know, just some type of rehearsal of you changing this habit. Yeah, that was the tower. <laughs> Reversal of those habits, you know. Um, yes, I like this. The queen, oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> queen of water on the mind and king of water on the heart. Wow. This is like the most, it's like, the temperance card now what's interesting you still have the high priestess in the middle but it came reversed because remember all of this is requires your conscious desire it requires you also especially with this card what i just noticed her star under her eye and this is the left eye this is the eye for the feminine it wants you to see yourself as the unique self that you are. If like, if you can't see it, how is ever anyone can, can see it too? You need to see it first. Okay, so there's something, it's almost like I wanna like sit. Um, this is rare when it happens, when you have a divine partnership in the cars that come forward, especially, you know, you had the tower here, Remember, this is the mind, the mindset had to be cracked to like the heart had to crack the mind almost, you know, and whatever was the experience, it had to break you to make you in tune with that feminine. And through that feminine, you're going to get the action. It's almost like it's all reversed, but it's perfectly, perfectly intertwined. Okay, this was divinely guided for you to receive right now. So that's what I have for you. House number nine. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if that resonates. If it's happening for you, come back to it. It was 12, 12 right now. I had to say it. this is, remember, double wham for you. <laughs> uh, so if you see 12s or a series of 11s or 22s or 2222 or triples, uh, that's definitely a sign for you for those next 28 days in alignment with this activation. So pay attention. If you need personal guidance, you have the description box below and all my offers. Thank you so very much. Namaste. House number 10 for this new moon in Sagittarius. So let me explain to you. This is the mind. This is the heart. This is the chemistry, how it is in coherence uh, between each other. And this is the general message. Now, the only reversal cards that we have are those inner energies. So this is very interesting to me. 
um, because that's kind of giving you uh, an indication that you need to learn how to have temperance, how to um, uh, navigate those next 28 days with a good balance between your heart and your mind. Now, let's see those energies. We have action on the feminine heart aspect. It says, stop hesitating. Movement creates the magic. Nothing can hold you back. I believe that some of you, you know me, maybe from Instagram, with all my reels, now I started posting them on YouTube shorts. I love the embodiment through dance of the soul dancing, okay? This is how I channel all those reels. It's because when I tap into the cosmos, this is what I see. I see energy move. And this is calling you to move and literally understand that when you take the time to tap into your feminine, so be in stillness, be in solitude, and just like, you know, let the universe, and especially if you have rituals with the new moon, you know, let yourself be watching the skies, the stars on that new moon and allow this energy to run through you. Now, what happens after the dancing, the movement, the call to go and cook or go and uh, do a craft or whatever, an art, a creative video, this is part of the whole channeling. You need to understand house number 10, that everything that you're receiving from your moments of stillness are going to lead you into action. But this is very well balanced. And this is where I feel like I need uh, to implement this almost like automatism, teach you this automatism for you to understand how this is all a process that is almost like, you know what I'm seeing? Like when I said that, um, the rain with the clouds, this whole process of the evaporation of the water and then the clouds forming and the rain happening and this whole cycle, okay? But it is very, um, it's very flowy. We're not feeling like, oh, this is a struggle. But this is something that's going to allow you change, okay? This is the theme that you're going through with this activation. And it's probably, um, you know, what I feel for you is that getting out of survival mode, getting into thriving mode. And that comes from you following more of your impulse from your heart, from when you are in stillness. It's going to lead you into action, but allow yourself to move and let your body move through life according to whatever you, you align to, okay? And that might not be always clear, but this is going to change you. I embrace change in this new day and I adapt to what is to come, okay? So it, it just feels like a lot more flow, less resistance. Oh, this is not working out. Oh, there is, you know, for example, even like I try to explain that to people uh, when they have problems with driving and being impatient behind the wheel. That's a very great exercise to realize that, for example, you could be avoiding an accident or anything because you're here waiting stuck or whatever. There's sometimes some divine orchestration that if you can relax into whatever is happening and control your breath. I remember that uh, I was always stuck in traffic uh, because of my hours when I was doing a nine to five and where I was living in the snow and whatever. Um, I started buying audiobooks because I was getting so frustrated that I only had like 15 miles and sometimes it could be like an hour and a half. And I was like, and I was like, I need something to get me out of that space. And that's what I found. And I loved it. And then it didn't matter. I was like moving the car. <laughs> it was like if I had to focus on it, which was what I was doing before, it was driving me crazy and anyone, but I had to find a way out. So it's almost like that solution came from, you know, witnessing a situation that I could not change and allowing something to be born out of this and, and something that was really enjoyable. That sometimes I was like, damn, I didn't finish the chapter and I'm home already. <laughs> Okay, so a little illustration 
some of mental exercise so you can fe feel victorious, okay? Because this is the six of one. This is about victory. This is about feeling accomplished, okay? And I feel like that little story might be um, purposeful for some of you, especially, you know, at the end of the year, this could be a lot of traffic. There could be a lot of delays and packages not coming or whatever, okay? So, um, oh, and I forgot, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, so that could be playing out as uh, this is going to be part of that cycle. Um, but that's especially for you. It came up. Uh, house number 10. It didn't really come through for others. Not that they're not going to feel it. But here it is purposeful because in the mind it says magnetic one. Okay. And this is it speaks more of the sun. The sun. So I, it's a very bad drawing. Because the sun is supposed to be here. This is more Mercury. So it's as if this... Uh, you see how I, you have a little flesh? So if you have a little protrusion here under the um, ring finger. And it says here as a key ID. Possess a public persona. Tendency towards personal display. Taste and individuality. And in the spotlight. Okay. So this is also kind of screaming at me as far as illumination. There's a lot of things that we just even shared right now that's going to be illuminated. You're going to have great ideas, great things that can give you exposure, that can give you success, abundance, but it's going to also illuminate your shortcomings. Okay, your shortcomings. And um, if you want more messages, this is something that I started recommending, especially I feel around house number eight, because there was some phase where there was a lot of fogginess and unclarity as far as activating that gift. When you, you receive a message for a house, okay, because I'm doing those readings purposefully so you can learn how to navigate your own chart, but also understand that this is a wheel. And right now, if you listen to the whole 12, 12 steps of this new moon uh, reading, not that you have to, uh, but you would have the whole message that we channel shortly in the collective. You would have the whole process that it, you, someone can go through in order to activate all of it. So you don't need to listen to all of this. But if you're listening to this and you are, for example, struggling with change or your elimination and feeling victorious or getting into your action, go and listen to the messages before. Okay, it's just like a step back but this is a good one because it gives you clarity on how to get to house number 10 okay so house number 10 we're going to pull some caro uh, caro <laughs> or oh, my dyslexia some tarot cards okay you saw what i did i put the c of cars in instead of the t for tarot yeah so some of you might be something um that you have dyslexia or some type of synesthesia. Some of you, you might not know what that is. Synesthesia is uh, something where certain signals uh, are read differently. Like you can see letters and you see colors. Uh, words can have sounds. Uh, there's a lot of like different senses that are connected through the brain. So that could be something that is also, I want to give it to you because I had to discover it, because I have all of this. Uh, this is a gift. This is a superpower where you're receiving signals, but you're getting other senses associated with it. The same with dyslexia. It's not, I mean, once you know how to navigate it, um, this is because there's sometimes a short circuit because you're channeling, okay? And your mind has a focus on something, but you're channeling at the same time. So I feel as some of you needed to hear this, because you might have a lot of maybe, uh, how do you call this? Freudian slips or whatever. But things that you say and you're like, but that's not what I meant. Pay attention to the things that you thought that you did not mean to say. Okay, there's, there's something here. Uh, it doesn't have to be for everyone, but it's definitely for someone. All right, let's go and move on. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, yes. Transformation. This is the death card. This is, as some of you, um, if you had some rough patches in life and also maybe a rough childhood because this is a child, there's some deep transformation that's going to occur through this phase. 
um, your inner child is definitely helping the process of you parenting yourself, just like we started channeling as far as like a little advice to help you navigate this energy. This is helping you transform and step out of the survival mode, starting to thrive, starting to tap into more pleasure. Oh, yes, yes, yes. More pleasure, more master with the Empress, two major arcanas. And then here we have the six of earth. It came reverse because remember, um, this is the last card that we're pulling. And that's kind of like the result. You're going to experience a great amount of proper give and take. But it requires for some of you, especially with the heart, that you have to give more to yourself. Okay, you have to nurture more of your heart. You have to nurture those wounds. I've recently released an inner child sovereignty frequency for my YouTube members. So some of you, you've been sharing with me um, that you've been doing and attending those wounds. In particular, um, you can access as a collective. I shared my soul fragments retrieval. This is when experiences are so, you know, intense um, that we fragment our consciousness, you know, it's just we kind of dissociate there and it it takes away some of your light. It's like the way that I can explain it the best is that as if you left a little piece of yourself in that event because you haven't fully processed it or maybe there's some regrets or maybe there's some grief or anything like that. I said that was going to be the last card, but I lied. <laughs> I feel I want to give more. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. I feel I want to give more. So am I going out of negative conditioning here if I want to give more? Let's see. Let's see what it tells me. Six of air, six of swords. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was almost like you saw here. It's almost like I said this was the last card, but a part of me that has a tendency to overgive, overplease, uh, wanted to give you more. But that's, that's a great example that I'm able to showcase to you where you will have to catch yourself when it needs just to be it, okay? And that, yeah, that, that's my answer, that, that's no, or, you know, that's, yeah, I want to do this and I don't want that, okay? So there, there's some very deep message and change uh, that is coming for you uh, with this new moon in Sagittarius if you have it in the 10th house. That's all I have for you, as we shared here. <laughs> So thank you so very much. If you need personal guidance, you have some available promotion at this time. Check out the description box. And if you want to share your house, comment if it resonated. Give me a little thumbs up. That would be highly appreciated. Namaste. <laughs> house number 11. So let me explain to you. I had to interrupt after three seconds in. Okay. Something very interesting happened where... Remember, if you watched a collective reading, this new moon energy, if you paid attention, is a seventh house uh, energy. So there's a lot of transcending the ego personalities to access the higher self. Uh, there could be a lot of interactions and relationship with others that are intermingled in that energy. Now, house 11 is about networking. I started feeling very nervous, uh, almost to the point that my stomach would hurt. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever had like um, maybe a job interview and your stomach hurts and you have to go to the bathroom all the time um, because of that apprehension. And it feels with this activation of some gift, some skill, okay, something that is fated for you to receive, okay, that they could be with this 11th house energy, some type of maybe nervousness or apprehension that comes with it. So I want to give you as an insight, just in case maybe some of you, you've um, experienced a lot of nervousness, okay? Maybe, oh, I know where I'm going with that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Big Audrey. Um, I've been talking about this on my Reels and YouTube Shorts about the nervous system, okay? You are an antenna. It was literally when I had to go to the bathroom. I couldn't, like, if three seconds in, I was like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? And I just realized what was happening. Um, 
which happens all the time, <laughs> like when I channel. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is why as a child, I was always in so much physical pain and it made no sense. Uh, some of them made sense um, as far as my aches and ails. But it's because when you let yourself cha channel the energy, you, you can literally feel what's going on. So nervousness, and especially if you've been feeling very impatient, very frustrated, irritable, okay, you are an antenna. All of us are, okay? And some of us more aware of it and some less. But we all are very receptive and susceptible to each other unless we start, you know, working consciously on this and having more uh, mind mastery um, with also allowing the heart. Okay, so I was posting about the nervous system because this is how you receive the signals. This is like, I'm like channeling some a message. And my nervous system and how it literally is programmed and plugged into my organs made me react a certain way. Okay, so I feel as some of you, maybe there's an apprehension to activate or to come out. So what it felt, it was almost like a fear of being exposed uh, or to be uh, looked by others, um, or maybe some of you, there is a spiritual awakening that's that's going on for you, and you're kind of like looking at the world very differently, so it's making you a little bit self-conscious. Um, so it feels like there's some type of nervousness with this activation that we're going to remove as we work our magic through this, okay? So I wanted you to see my face so you can get the comfort <laughs> because uh, that's what I would have needed uh, because I was like, what the hell is going on? Oh, another thing. Um, if you're working with this and you're struggling with this, I have an astral body healing and activation in my playlist. Um, I think it is in the survival kit for empath okay so that could be something as far as helping you with the nervous system some of you that are youtube members i created a nervous system regeneration great for power naps yes all right so let's look at the cards in the middle higher self in reversed so do you remember when i just told you it's like the higher self because you receive all the signals from others but you also receive the the higher self through that same antenna now if it's overloaded with crap from others you're not able to receive proper signal so here it says i am ready to communicate with my higher self in my dreams and to become enlightened okay so some of you showers are great to also cancel out the noise uh, going into nature, the trees are great for absorbing and recycling just with the oxygen and the carbon. Uh, this whole process is the same energy-wise. It's amazing to be in nature. Um, you have here the meditation card that is in reverse. And in this deck, this is the 12th. This is the hanged man. You see she has a halo. And this is where I channel, but I had not seen this uh well i saw it but i didn't consciously feel it or yeah i did feel it but i didn't consciously think of it um the spiritual awakening now i'm not sure about this planet but i i feel neptune here for some reason we have neptune that's just going direct uh december 6th as i'm channeling this it's coming uh we're going to have mercury retrograde as after the cycle of that 28 days, we're going to have that Mercury retrograde impacting the uh, new moon in Sagittarius. So that means there's going to be a review of how you think. But remember also, uh, Neptune is allowing you right now to, because it's going direct, to really have access more of your subconscious, which is very important for you with the higher self for your house 11. Okay, you're, re you're receiving an invitation to consciously connect with your higher self. And you see it, it's more on the side of the mind. Here you have the expressive one, the air hand. So the air element is the mental state. It says here on the key ideas, sociable, inquisitive, studious, investigative, and curious, brainstormer, and debater, and ideas person. I feel that... <clears throat> 
if you've been in a place where your ideas were stale or you were a little bit stalled in your action, Neptune seems to going that direct seems to help you. But because there's going to be a Mercury retrograde, it's almost as if you need to put in relationship this energy where your communication with your higher self, that subconscious, is going to give you greater ideas than whatever you thought was possible for you. Okay, there's something greater uh, with this energy that I feel. Now, your feminine energy, we're up uprighting everything. The feminine energy is amazing. You have the strength and the journey. And what I mean by this is that there is this, the strength usually also comes with the uh, infinity symbol. There's from those two cards together, an amount of abundance and prosperity and, and flow that I can feel that is huge. But remember what I share with you, you need to be able to receive it and your antenna aka your nervous system is going to be uh, need to be optimized so some of you might be quitting coffee might be quitting any type of um excitement well, how do you call that not excitement i'm sorry uh, stimulant <laughs> just like caffeine um any type of things that are putting you in a brainwave that is shifting your focus on the outside Okay, you want to go more inward and be calm and stillness and kind of like channel this power. Okay, there's a lot of power that wants to come through with the strength card. And it's going to show you, reveal to you your unique gift and way of expressing it. But it is from the higher self. It is going to come through the body of your nervous system. Just like I shared this little story. <clears throat> now it makes more sense. Now, um, my throat keeps on mm, struggling here. And um, I, I, there was a lot of upgrades for how mindful we need to become with our words and chosen words staying on a very positive mindset, not by ignoring the past, but by seeing how the negative experiences gifted us something that that couldn't be given without the experience, okay? So it feels like there's some upgrade in the way you talk about your experience, about maybe, remember, because here with this overstimulated nervous system you could be irritable you could be nervous you, th this whole like uh, okay uh that could be that needs to calm down you need to calm down calm down calm down some of you you might need to ooh, dance 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 yes yes you might need to dance 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 and do silly things 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 yeah <laughs> okay nine of swords nine of air here in the mind, okay? There was some stuff that needs to be eliminated. It's upright, so you're probably receiving, you probably have started to do this work, you're probably doing this work, continue doing this work. You have the four of wands here, the four of fire, that speaks of a great inspiration coming through, but remember this card, the hangman was reversed. So it's this creative power comes from overcoming some of your mental prisons. Okay, I feel for you, it's very strong. This is interesting because the placement of Neptune that we had in the last degrees of Pisces, they're very much about, you know, those endings that we need to put as far as situations and illusions. So you're, you're doing a great job and with that Neptune going direct, this is going to support you, but remember, meditate. You have the page of fire. There's definitely here some creative outburst. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. Okay, what? Um, I saw literally rainbow outburst, Skittles, uh, candies. I, I just celebration. It was eleven twenty two on the video. That could be um, a series of number for you, elevens, twenty two, or you know triples of that. And we have here, yes, the Hierophant. I love this because this, this card in this deck, is it feels very high priestess as well. 
It's like you're uniting. There's a sacred union that is happening here in terms of you understanding how to channel your higher self in greater ways, how to receive more of that divine sacred energy. This is very unique, but the only thing that could fry you, it's probably overload of signals from others, from past experiences. You need to cancel those out. You need to recharge. You need to rest. You need to dance. You need to have fun. Okay. And there's so much uh, great activation that are coming for you house number 11 so that's what i have for you um as far as this new moon energy look at me <laughs> look at me i swear so do you see this is like kind of subconscious like you hear or you see things and then you recreate them because it has such an impact okay and some of you it's like an invitation to dance okay uh, to do silly things or just, you know, express yourself in greater ways. Um, but anyways, <laughs> okay. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you need personal guidance, I have some promotion uh, to awaken the sacred divine feminine, especially for those gifts until the end of December. Thank you so very much. Namaste. House number 12. Okay, so let me explain to you. This is the mind, this is the heart, this is the coherence between the mind and the heart. And there you have the higher self message or just the higher message for this whole period of time. It says here, ask for help. I am willing to receive help from the universe whenever and however it happens, okay? So this is not surprising me because the house 12 is about the Akash, past lifetimes, the subconscious, the hidden, esotericism, things we don't know. It's the unknown. It's meant to be revealed. So if you have this energy, which is a strong activation, okay, that can be confusing because it's unknown, okay? You have, you're going to be double activated in a placement that is unknown but it's not known to whom your conscious mind okay that doesn't mean it has to stay that way so there's going to be an activation and how does it come through the only reversal we have is in the coherence the coherence here is the nine of wands this is the wounded healer card okay so some of you if you don't know uh you're new to my channel by the way welcome if you are um, I create music, sound engineering for this, but I gifted this amazing playlist for us that is the Wounded Healer. It's karmic astrology. It helps you rebalance your Chiron placement in your natal chart. Okay, so you would go to your natal chart. You look at your placement uh, in the zodiac. Where is your Chiron? Taurus, Scorpio, uh, Libra, Gemini. You look and it, you're going to be given the um pull opposition to work with so that means if you have chiron and gemini you'll find in the wounded healer playlist gemini working with sagittarius this is connected to the vertebrates connected to the frequencies of the planet this is deep sound engineering and the mantras that i use are all gratitude based mantras they're sanskrit mantras they work really well for me because i had a lot of resistance with any language I could understand <laughs> in terms of like changing my mindset because I had a lot of like, you know, um, sarcasm uh, as far as like, yeah, right, Scorpio here. Uh, <laughs> not the truth. Um, not believing this bullshit. Um, so I had to work with words that were highly in, in prayers you know i needed something that was elevated and in ways that i knew that i was reciting you know words and resonance and chanting them um, that had been used for thousands and thousands of years and i knew many people in my situation were tapping into that vibration so i knew i could gather that wisdom okay and and it really shifted my whole entire working existence so um if you never tried you don't have to recite them you can allow yourself to first hear that that's how i started 
Um, first, just listening. I had to program myself for a whole year just to be able to meditate, you guys. Okay, this girl can meditate now for hours and feel like it's nothing. And before, I could not even sit my ass down. So I don't come from a place where I was just like, ooh, yes, meditation. I was like, I'm not doing this. It's bull right now. Okay, um, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just like, who was that girl? <laughs> Now, no, it was that girl. So that was a wounded one. Okay. So some of you, this is an invitation for this um, because it came in incoherence. This is this is creating AVOC. Okay. And you have here the card of our life path. If I'm not mistaken, that was part of the collective message. Um, if not, it was maybe a house number one, but I think it was a collective message where we had like all the prints of... Uh, the fingers and it's talking about the wave now this is the fingerprint file that speaks of responsibility so let's read about this even though we might not have that in our patterns okay it says here your life path is to be a responsible person boring <laughs> that would have been me in the past just saying i needed to entertain you and entertain myself um yeah okay so you understand <laughs> Some of you, if you're still in, the, in, in, in hearing those voices that are very like, oh, fudge, uh, um, it's because you're still in those, that survival, like almost fight or flight. And it's so, it's so present in your field that you need movement. It needs to move. It needs to be fast. There's no rest. But just so you know, that's not in alignment and especially here you have the cycles with the feminine we'll talk about this more um the feminine you need proper balance of rest and action okay so being and doing okay i feel that that was required right yeah okay so let's start again <laughs> Sorry. your life path is to be a responsible person Shh. <laughs> In the duties that are given to you or that you take on yourself. <laughs> so, you will become a strong person by being productive and working hard. Those that have this life path have difficulty feeling inner peace. Oh, Lord, there we are. <laughs> they get restless easily and if they are not self-disciplined, and, and they are not self-disciplined. Even if you have difficulties, you will be able to deal with life easily and stay calm if you take pride in your work and do it well. Also, being in nature makes you feel relaxed. Walking through a forest, walking, working outdoors, or even working in a garden will make you feel happy and fulfilled. Okay, so nature, very good. Um, I don't think I said that to you just yet, um, but that's something that you can find if you're struggling with this energy of resting and rebalancing yourself. Go and check out message of house 11. Let me explain to you. When I channel transits or events, the zodiac is a wheel of ascension, of enlightenment. So pretty much if you had the time, <laughs> to listen to this whole reading from collective or like 1 to 12, you would know the whole spectrum of teachings for this new moon in Sagittarius. We have a collective message that gives you just a general, but if you wanted the steps and the details and the depth of where we can fall short or whatever, that's the whole thing. So now, don't ask you to do that, but if you're struggling with a house, or the messages are unclear and there's just, you want more, you go to the house before, okay? And if that still is not enough, you go one before again, and so on and so forth. Um, but usually one or two houses before should unlock you, okay? Uh, so that might be for someone that needs to hear this. But we are not done just yet. Uh, let's read the cycle card. It says, we are all becoming surrender to your changes release your fear trust this powerful process i did feel there was a lot of power and realize that oh, almost like the power of your resistance is as equal as the power of what you're surrendering so that means 
when you're going to surrender the amount of power that you feel from saying no 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 you know that can be channeled like as a lot of energy realize that it has that much equal amount of illumination and potential for you to free yourself to overcome and really uh shift okay so you do have to ask for help so some of you um you might need support as far as working with your angelic team your spirit teams your ancestors and things like that just ask ask and the universe will respond okay some of you you know maybe or maybe not um, i do have until the end of december a promotion to awaken the goddess the wild feminine within they are roaring we have kali medusa lilith and ishtar okay that came forward very strongly with the venus in scorpio this transit is really strong. Venus is helping us with uh, understanding how to manifest our desires. Okay, let's see what we have here. Ooh, the star. There's healing. There's forgiveness and the synchronicity coming. Um, I would say like as you're doing this work and getting the, the, the reception, you're getting more and more in tune and in alignment with your true self there's more synchronicities this card really wants to with the number 17 wants to give you um, reassurance through repetition of numbers and i would say uh pay attention to 11s and number seven we have here the six of water that is you know the six of cups there's something maybe from the past i feel for you this is interesting because it feels like with the cycle there might be some type of activity, hobby that you were doing as a child. I think that some of you, like maybe if you like to draw or paint or do a certain sport, now maybe as an adult, it feels like, eh, what's the point? What's the purpose? It's just, it's a call to go back into more of your inner child uh, energy ace of air it came reverse this some this is the ace of swords oh um, yes the ace of swords some type of untruth let's see here untruth okay so this is under the responsible so remember how i was reacting to oh you have to oh yes i remember this is something that i felt way early on and i forgot to mention it um this new moon in Sagittarius wants to teach you how to be responsible for your creation. To understand even the process of creation itself with planting the seed, letting it grow, keeping your magic on. That means, you know, your hope, your, your livelihood, your joy, your gratitude. You know, you're knowing your vision in its fruition and then allowing what needs to fall, the leaves, you know, the renewal of its plant itself, go through that cycle. You know, there's just some type of um, realization almost as if the universe wants you to look even at your life and who you're becoming in a phase where you've shed so many skin and now you have to also appreciate for you to get to that next level of activation. You can't get to the next level if you don't appreciate and witness your own accomplishment, your own shedding, your own things that you had to overcome and just really appreciate it deeply, okay? Okay, one more card. The seven of water, there's, there's a lot of illusion that needs to be transcended as far as who you were and who you're becoming that's going to shine through you know through that energy there was a lot of things you had to experience to be in that space of um you know chiron is is its own it, it's an asteroid that that activates your own guru your own teacher 
And you can have then, you know, a very keen awareness. The house 11 had the higher self here. There was some blockages. So I feel for your house 12, definitely go check out a house 11 if you're struggling. Um, this energy is, is about becoming your own master and student, you know, teacher student relationship with yourself and allowing this process to unfold beautifully. The five of air, five of swords, you know, it's like almost like you're paying attention to whatever brings tension in your life is a moment where you're being called to release. I would say that's like a great advice for those next 28 days for you is that when you feel tension, irritation, frustration, anything that is just like, or, mm, okay, um, just realize that's because you're forcing, let go. Just distract yourself with something else. What I mean is like, go listen to music, go take a shower, go cook yourself a good meal. Some of us, we suffer a lot of being hangry, okay? So you might be a hangry baby. Um, so that's that's what I have for your house number 12. If it resonates and it supports you, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and let me know if that's your house. And if you need support, check out the description below. Namaste. <laughs>